Well, welcome along, folks. Uh, big game down here at uh, Tea Tree Gully, Pertaringa Oval. It's uh, Tea Tree Gully versus Port Districts. My name is Tony Neal, and joining me, we've got a plethora of guests. And uh, first one in today is Peter Personals from Tea Tree Gully. Welcome, first of all, Peter. Uh, how you going? Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's good to be here. Fantastic, mate. And uh, unfortunately, an injury season ending uh, last week, the ACL. Take yeah. us through it. How are you feeling? You've uh, yeah, yeah, a bit of mixed emotions at the moment, yeah, but I'm still, I'm pretty much an excitement package around the club anyway, vocal and still going to be around helping everyone out where I can, but yeah, it was just one slight movement didn't work and my knee buckled under me. Yeah, yeah. and look, uh, you will get back mate, I've been through it and uh, from all of us here at Filming Footy and Dartfish and the Adelaide Footy League, we, will, we wish you all the best mate because... The thing I miss, I was looking forward to today, was coming along. You are full of fast Swiss muscle fibres, yeah. and that's the way I see you play in uh, the excitement machine. So uh, we'll go through our day. It's a pleasure to have you on, uh, maybe around for the first quarter. Give us some insight onto yeah, some players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, mate, if you do any good, we might keep you on for the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. I can, I can be around anyway. So they've got the uh, 100 games, Jack Asprey, uh, the line up there at the moment we can see to the left of screen. and. Just take us through a bit about Jack. What's he like around the uh, club? Yeah, Jack's Jack's a privilege to play with. He's just one of those sort of guys. He's a great fella. He's uh, every time you play with him, he doesn't really make many mistakes in the footy field. And I've played a couple of grand finals with him now, also, which has been great. And yeah, I just remember when I was just at Mendy in Nordtree, and he was coming up as a little kid, and I was helping him out. And then yeah, now I get to play with him, and it's amazing. Yeah. Nah, fantastic. A hundred games at any level, mate, is sensational yeah. at the one club. Um, so we'll go on uh, at the moment. Of course, our uh, game day sponsors are uh, Filming Footy, Sports Interactive, uh, the Division 1 Adelaide Footy League. The scoreboard is brought to us by Sportal and Hahn. Hahn, ultra low carb, great taste, ultra low carb, how good. Filming Footy, Footy Stats and, uh, well, Peter, what do they say there? Dartfish. Yeah, and... And we've got the best on ground, Archie's thongs. Yep. And the measure... Uh, make, make sure ratify. Make sure ratify, sorry. And of course our coach of the week uh, wins the Farmer's Leap uh, bottles of wine, three bottles of the Random Shot Wines, Roller Dice Racing, a media award for Player of the Year. The prize is a 5% share in the racehorse. And, uh, well, you've probably been around these yeah, two. Yeah, Goal of the Week and Mark of the Week. Goal of the Week, week and Mark of the Week is brought to you by Born to Build. The prize is donated by Wakefield Sports Clinic. Mark of the Week is brought to you by Bianco. Winner receives a $100 voucher. And of course you can see all the winners by going to the Filming Footy social media page and watching the weekly footy show Between the Posts. Our five live streams of Division 1 are proudly brought to you by Archie's, Dartfish, Programs to Fit, Classic Clashes, Filming Footy, Footy Stats. As we see the Tea Tree Gully and the Port District teams out on the ground as we speak. Uh, Pete, take us through the ground conditions. Uh, yeah, well, the ground conditions looks amazing at the moment. I'd love to be out there, to be honest, and uh, not a cloud in the sky at the moment, so it's great. I think it's 21 degrees and great weather. Yep. Now yeah, we've got a firm ground. Currently 21, and what's the expected temperature? Oh, 20. It's going to go backwards. Yeah, well. All right, now, B-grade school, well, unfortunately, the goalies went down for uh, 8 goals, 10.58, to 10 goals, 12.72. Uh, a little bit on the stats, we'll Port District after one week, of course, uh, sitting on top of the ladder. I was at that game last week against Broadview and uh, they did an outstanding job winning uh, winning by 53 points down there. They did, of course, have 11 goal scorers and player to watch today is number 17, Harry Dwyer, with three goals, Benjamin Gould, two, and Brody Hawkins with two. Uh, over to Tea Tree Gully. Well, how did the gullies go? Uh, we lost by 22 points. Uh, one change. No, lost the interchange. Lost the interchange. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we had, we had With no yourself, bench. of course. With me yeah. and myself, we had two concussions, and then we had well, one stage was 17 down in the last quarter with a dislocated finger as well. Jeez. And who were your better players last week? Uh, Cody Tay played well. He was un unbelievable. Adam Ashotta, he's just throwing his body along the line. And obviously, Blake Penny, bucking all day. Brody Latham, normally my small forward duo, and he's played well as well. And Noah Hyde, new player to the group, yeah. young kid. He was, well, he was really good as well. 
And your goal scorers there? Uh, Brody Latham, Latham, two goals, Jack Ashby, one, and Chris Olsen, one. And of course, the better players for Port District, I refrain from mentioning, was Benjamin Gould, Cooper Gaffney, Joseph Haynes, Broden Hawkins, and Sam Gray. And of course, our best on ground by the broadcast team was Cooper Gaffney with the thongs. This week's game, of course, you've got Tea Tree Gully and Port Districts. The game here, we've got uh, Golden Grove versus St Peter's, uh, Sacred Heart versus Paynham Norwood Union, Glenunga versus Broadview, and Prince Alfred versus Brighton. So that's a little bit of a lead in to the game. Uh, as we said, we're going to have some guests throughout the day. Uh, with yourself, Peter, yep. as we're just going to keep an eye on what's happening with the toss as well. So your four ins. Mitch Napper, so give us a bit yeah, on Mitch. Mitch Napper, he played a bit of in and out of the A's last year. He, was, he, came, he did a hamstring, hamstring injury just the end of pre-season, so just nursing that, and now he's back in, so he's be a good in for us. Uh, Jack Hazelhurst. Jack Hazelworth, he's a young kid that we're coming up through the ranks at the moment. I think he's 19 years, 18, 19 years old now, and he's, yeah, just showing us some good footy. Uh, Elliot Brogdon, so he's a junior, I believe, yeah, in for his first through, game. Yeah, junior through the footy club. I've loved what he's been about. He used to be a bigger boy, like, running around the C grade, and then he's just worked himself up and up, and then, yeah, just did outstanding pre-season. Trial games looked unbelievable, and, yeah, he gets his shot. So, uh, good on him. Blake Penny was a bit like that. Did he come through the C's yeah, or the B's at one yeah, point? I or he was in the B grade for a yeah. little bit, and then, yeah, when just before I came to the club, and then he was in the A's since then. And, of course, uh, Ryan Heffernan. Yeah, back Ryan in. Heffernan back in. Yeah, he was a bit stiff last week, but it was a tough decision. Yeah, we had a few. We had no, no, no injuries, really. Yeah, then, fair uh, enough. Yeah, and then we had four in the, by the end of the game, which I, I, doesn't happen. Yeah, well, we go across the Port District. As I said last week, uh, I got to watch them, and it was really one of those situations where uh, all played well. But uh, Niska Hus is going to be a handful, number three in the middle. Watch out for Sam Gray because you'll find that, uh, we'll get to Scott Lysett in a moment, but in the ruck he tends to, he taps, but you'll see a lot of the time Sam Gray is at the back of the circle and the ball somehow gets back to him. James Batty, I love him. He um, wasn't, didn't really do a lot last week, but he did enough. But he's an excitement machine up for On the list for a, for a little while down there, and uh, well, he's making his debut. Just a couple of little hitches here with our filming. So, we hope to bring our screen back to you in a moment. But you can create uh, and share short movies with music oh, nice. according to our pre game uh, preparation. Like that. So, uh, we'll get this back on. Here we go, and uh. Well, in the middle, as we said, Lysette. So just watch out for Niska, who's there, number three. And you've got there in the, in the middle there, Chris Olsen. So yeah. interviewed him the other night. Yeah, he's, good, a, he's, he's a great inclusion for the team. He's just he's just running ability. He just doesn't stop. He just keeps going and going. So a match-up, first of all, in the middle, which is an interesting start. So both teams playing on each other. You'll see this will be a great battle between oh, the Rucks great. because yeah. it is yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, body on body. And they're two good-sized blokes. And... Well, Port exciting. Districts, yeah, just uh, handball that ball forward. Good, strong tackle. Just take us through a little bit of that, Pete. The, the tackling pressure is strong by Teacher yeah, Gully yeah. already. Last, last week, that's what we brought, and then yeah, just un unfortunate, we dropped a few players and we had no, nothing left in the tank by the end of the game. But our tackling pressure, that's been our key focus over pre-season. And it's there, isn't it? You can see, yeah. I, as Straight I said last week, I was at the... Ground. Part of uh, what Port District did last week was they'll bring the ball down the ground, then they'll go inside where they can. Yeah. We see the two ruckmen just coming in. So uh, 
Tell us what Blake's going to do here, mate. Yeah, I tapped behind his back, I reckon. <laughs> he tried, didn't he? He tried there, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've got a good young group that just they just want to try and try and try. That's the that's the great thing I love I've about it. Noah Hyde just came off the pack there. He just sort of broke out. It's good. It's not see ball get ball. It's uh, know where the value of space is. And there's what I said about well, Port District. That, the pressure, the pressure. We like that's what we did, wanted to bring. We had a young group. You're going to bring that pressure, and everyone just peel off by with each other. So do you reckon uh, does Blake ruck for the whole game? Does he yeah, tend to got, have a change? Uh, we, got, uh, we had a ruck, uh, Liam Potts. He's a new player into the club as well. He, yep. He plays at Payton, I think, last year or the year before. So he's handy. He's a big fella as well. So chop in for him. So Tyler Martin just tried to get it over the back. You know that hat kick forward. That'll do at the moment. Almost to uh, number 30 there. Nash Haynes, a good player. Oh, so they no. run and carry through the middle here. Yeah. Now they'll get a kick, but it's a high one. So that's going to be a 50-50. Good defence at the back. So who is that one that's there? That's Adam Machotta, just at the spoil. Yeah, he's done well there. And getting a ball up, so yeah, it's, so it's, it's a mini win, isn't us. it? That's what we need to win. We need to keep that pressure up for us. All right, let's have a look. Our umpires today, let's Matt see. Harris and Stefan Sederblad. And I was told that uh, is. Stefan is the tall guy, good-looking one, according to the umpires. <laughs> but, well, we won't go into that. Oh, oh. that's a big tackle there. Yeah. And he's a great player, Chris Olsen. Yeah, he's definitely a good player. He's got a lot of skill behind him. Same with that James White. He's come from North Adelaide, I think. He's from the reserves, and he's also showing some great colour. So at the moment, we're uh, two and a half minutes in, Peter, and uh, the ball's really been going between the 50-metre yeah, arcs, hasn't yeah, it? it? We haven't seen anything at the yet. Moment. Looks like a game of tennis at the moment. It's one end to the other. It's very physical, good, strong tackles. We've got Tyler West in the ruck at the moment. So he's come up from the forward line, yep. has he, Tyler? Yep. yep, and then Tico's dropped back a bit. To he's had a couple of handballs already, uh, big Blake Penny there, yeah. and getting the ball out. Oh, nice high fly at the back, Good. but a backman should punch. Exactly. And this is where the crummer Peter Persons would have snuggled that. Know. We'd already have a goal I'm on the lurking. board. I'm already lurking. I'm already lurking. I was thinking hey, that right there. We're working yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. That's what happens when you're an injured player. I've yeah. been to, you'll oh, actually understand worry, the I'll game more and more. Exactly. I'll be sitting on the side and I think, I should have been there. That's yeah, me. I'm a little there. bit twitchy. <laughs> yeah. All right, so free kick. Let's see what Port Districts do here. They just go wide. You'll tend to find they may go wide and then come back inside. Haynes to Gray, so you can see the Sample and AFL experience yeah. there. Yeah. That is a beautiful kick. Playing in front, of course, Haynes goes That's on the boundary good. side. Yeah. I'm not, not a big fan of that because if you go yeah, boundary, yes. there's what happens. Go boundary, you get boundary. Yeah. And really, they've played into uh, yeah. Tito Gully's hands that's, there. That's young James White there with that nice spoil. He's just, he just work rate is unbelievable. And uh, Haynes, uh, Haynes going to be a handful. Yeah. Where's Haynes the will be pressure handy. forward because he's back on his own again here now. I reckon they structure that up. So they've, they've actually got three back yeah, here free, so. which means Tito Gully. So you promote to get players down the ground behind the ball uh, or just in around the ball? Just try and try and make it as even as we can around the footy field. So this is a good yeah. matchup. Tickets has come back. Big Blake Penny and so Haynes has to go with him. Yeah. And I know the Ruckman's not going to be fast, but I'll tell you what, Blake's covering a lot of ground there. And yeah, Lysette's uh, only just getting through the middle of the ground now. That's a good pickup. So if Blake can work off him, this is where the gullies will have the, uh, the advantage is around the ground. Haynes, it is at the back there, just getting a handball out. Nice, uh, nice little kick inside 50. Oh, he's he keep. Jeez, I tell you what. Oh, he's done, the, I thought he's done all right. Close of yeah. goal there, and I reckon. See, Harry Dwyer, I saw him last week, number 17. He's yep. a good height, good size, but just one of those elusive forwards. So the free kick, of course, for that last possession rule, this has got to be one of the most dangerous yeah, exactly, kicks yeah. in football. You come inside into that middle corridor, either yeah. go across. Or diagonally across long, I'm not yeah. real sure about Those that. Short but 45s can be very damaging, but inside 50, it's definitely hard defensive 50. So the gullies it's straight across. Yeah. So districts. this is Liam Ferns. Just that high kick. That yeah. gullies had like that. It's a big high kick into yeah. congestion. Now around the corner. Oh, oh I'll tell you no. what. Just standing on his own there yeah. was Sam Gray. Sam Gray. How did he leak out the back there? And that was uh, <laughs> Kenneth. Capani just got that kick in, yeah, and in the well, goal that's first goal. Easiest goal as you can kick. So you're a forward. How, how does that happen? You know, you're taught, you're told by the coach to be a pressure forward and run up the ground to the 50, yeah. and there he is lurking down the goal Some, square. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes you can just sneak out the back. I, I've been a notorious for it. Yeah. Just you can run your player up, 
and then you see him going up to a contest, you slowly just drip back and, yeah, you kind of lose him and they're like, oh, how did you get there? <laughs> what you say is that's a strength of your game. Yeah, if, you, if you actually notice that with a player, and you know the player, and the back you, lines are, are, are designated to run down the ground, you can stretch the ground long. Oh, exactly right. And the way, the way I always focus is you, you, you try and stretch the field and lose your defender. Yep. That's what you want as a forward. So we're getting some good IQ and good smarts here from Peter Personos, uh, injured player for Tea Tree Gully. And, just some fantastic insights uh, of the Tea Tree Gully Good team sport. now, and oh. just dribbles out fortuitously. That's a nice kick oh. down there, and that was uh, Samuel McCoy. I tell you what, Peter, you only see goals, don't you? You know there's point posts there as well. Yeah, you, you've, yeah, you played out here long enough, and you reckon that was going to be oh, a goal as well. I was nervous. I tell you what, it, <laughs> everything is a goal for you. So oh, I, uh, I don't mind them. Get your name in the paper. Yeah, the that's good. Numbers next to it's always good. No, the insight is very good, mate, as we're uh, just rolling around to seven minutes because our scoreboard brought to us by Sportal and Hahn. Ultra low carb as that ball goes up. So that is uh, Tyler West yeah. coming forward. So let's see yeah, where so the Blake Penny's come West off. Come or he's Tyler just... West had 12 months off from last year, didn't ACL. That's correct, so, yes. Yeah, it's great to have him back in. He's just trying to get his touch back, but that'll come eventually with footballers like him. He's got a good so, skill. So now we see Penny comes in. That's a, yeah. that's a good match-up, Lice. It's not getting all his own way. Yeah. I did notice last week he tried to get it out the back, which go. is actually Elliot going... Elliot Brogdon, first game. Here forwards is. way. All right, you call us through what's going to happen here in the forward. Uh, or Elliot wait Brogdon, till he, he's he kicks it, of yeah. course. He's got a decent kick behind him, so... This would be great for his confidence. He's a first gamer, kicks this through the middle. Hopefully the boys will get around him, I would have thought, anyway. Josh Spence wasn't lurking for drive-by yeah, there, was he? Yeah, he always does. He loves a little big kick from 65. All right, call it through for us. Here we go. Elliot Brogdon going in. First gamer. Oh, he's just pushed it right. Hasn't made the distance. Is there any... Brody Latham with the... Yeah. In tight now, aren't they? Oh, here so, we go. Zachy McKay, it snaps. He's, I reckon he's kicked the goal. He's slotted that. Mitch Napper. Mitch Napper. Napper with a cracker. Zachy McKay with a cut off for Mitch Napper kicking the goal. So fantastic, and uh, to be able to see those players out there. And support District there, they were under pressure. I was talking to an ex Division 1 coach there through the week, and we were talking about football. You very rarely see the ball go coast to coast. Nah. That's not football. It's it's understanding that there are going to be turnovers. It's what you do when there is a turnover. And so what happened? Port District had the possession off that kick that came yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. It came out, but Tetri Gully very well set up. And uh, as you said, under a bit of pressure, Napa kicks the goal. Yeah, it's well footy these days. It's the pressure acts like you just you don't even need to do much. It's just a little touch on them while they're going to kick. Just puts pressure on the kicker. And it, every team's doing it these days. And when the team's on, it's hard to fucking pull to, to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, see Sam Gray at the back here. Yeah. But uh, Blake Penny, go. I reckon he's had the better of that. Yeah. So, uh, oh, just a little oh. soccer. The umpire's got to get out of the way. He's running oh. faster backwards than he is forwards. Player diving on the ball. That's oh, that's a back. win for Tetri yeah. Gay. First of the ball. Here he is. He's, he's a bit of an excitement machine, Napper. He's, uh, yeah, there's got a bit of going. He's got a little go to him. It's good. We talked oh. about that. There's a little touch in the back and uh, just a bit frustrated. Yeah, that's what there, yep. Because they, once again, they almost had him where they're going to the boundary. So he's, uh, that's Tyler West. Tyler West coming off now. So they're going a bit smaller, mid size. Yep. Yeah. Up it goes. Oh, that's, oh, a nice that's a nice grab. That's a nice grab. That is a good yeah, grab there. Yeah, the player flew up with him then. Oh, here we oh go. he's oh, played he on too. Oh, Lysette. <coughs> yeah, that was oh, a no. nice grab there. Scotty Lysette going back for a goal here. 25 metres out directly in front. <laughs> See how he goes through this one. Blake Penny wouldn't want him to kick a goal. Eh? Uh, he slotted it straight through the middle. So Scott Lysett Scott gets Lysett on the board. Kicks a goal. With his one. Our scoreboard ticking over. Two goals, one. That'll be 13. And uh, the gully's the one straight. Just rolling around a ten and a half minute mark, and that that was a good grab by Thomas Carter, and that could well be a contester for our mark of the week. Brought to you by yeah, Bianco. Yeah, too bad. He got a good flight there. Winner receives a one hundred dollar voucher. So uh, 
Yeah, it was interesting he gave that off. What would you have done there, Peter? Well, the I'm a left footer, so I probably would have oh, gone back and snapped the guard no and more. it straight through the middle. <laughs> say no more. Very good. Very good answer. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, so as I was saying, so Gray was behind. Now he's in, you see him there, he's facing us and he's standing on James White. And I was just yeah. watching this last week, but I've, I've been impressed with uh, Blake Penny in the ruck today already. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a very good player. He was leading now... Um, Voting he's last week, he's and done that's well again. Yep. Oh. Oh. but there he is getting the kick there. So he's, he's racking up Good the stats. Work. That was Elliot Brogdon with a brilliant mark there. What I've loved about Elliot Brogdon's way he goes about it is he throws his body at everything. The young fella. So there's Haynes. Look at that, goes. just the balance. But he's put it in the air. It's giving oh, Teacher a Gully a chance. Oh, nice out. Been given a free. free kick. Does he mean he looked out here on the yeah. wing, didn't he? Had to hold a long time, oh, Passanini didn't quite, so around the corner it comes. Capani now into the middle, it's up, it's down. Good support oh, by Tetra Gully, you got the oh, runners, no, Asprey. Okay, got it up there is Chris hey, Olsen. Oh, another good smother. Olsen, so Penny again doing the groundwork. I think he's winning around the ground as that ball, once again, the pressure there. The umpire with a sense of theatre has let that yeah. go, so the players are getting worked over here. Look at the numbers around that ball. Jeez, I'll tell you what, Penny again, oh. racking up the possessions. That's a keep fair up, kick down up. into the 50. Three on to one. Under pressure here is Braden Rackwell. Rackwell? How do we say that one? Uh, Rackwell. Rackwell. Yep. If you don't know it and I don't know it, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, you're doing well there. I hope I said it right anyway. Young man, yeah. yeah. So just a relief here for Nash Haynes. The players uh, get to take a breather. And, uh, well, a couple of players on the bench not too happy. As... Uh, Go, well, the cavalry are coming in behind us. Jeez, I'll tell you what, they do play on here, Port, Port District. District, but they've been under pressure. Now the carrier is Benjamin Gould. Just pops that up. Lysette now. Lysette and Penny working off each other. You can yeah. see Penny in, in the middle of the ground. If the gullies can get this, they do. Penny's on his own in the middle. They let the go over the top. Oh. It's going to go through just about everyone on the cricket pitch. Gray had to wait, so well done by Braden Wackwall again. 26 here, Breeden. It's up, it's down. He gets another go at it. He's oh. racking up the stats and he's giving it straight back. Haynes, umpire calls play on. I noticed yeah. Port District, every time they've had the ball in hand, they've decided to go wide from a setup. And that's, I keep saying it, you, you look for the boundary, you go to the boundary. So to Gully's capitalised here. Coming in there and uh, trying to get to it there was oh. Liam Potts. 1 2 here, Port District. Is he going to run himself into trouble? No, he's not. So delicately worked just on that far side. They look inside. This is what they were doing last week. They're a little bit different this week. Come down the flank once again. 50-50 ball. Through come the gullies. Three, four on two. Big pennies at the back there trying to get the breaths in. It's probably going to come out though. <laughs> and, uh, well, he's in the right position if it is a ruck throwing or a ball up. There he is. So up they go. I love that. Body on body, but they're two equally sized yeah. blokes, which are be really a great big match units. Up all game, I reckon. Gullies. Oh, around right. the corner there, Chris Olsen. That'll do. Just a hat kick forward to a 50 50. Port District's have got Haynes out the back. He's almost that quarterback. I shouldn't say that because it's Aussie Rules footy. The sweeper. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's soccer oh, yeah, as well. well so yeah. the spare, we'll know, say. The snapper. I like the look of him. He's. Uh, yeah, he looks a very well balanced footballer. Look yeah, at that. He's got a beautiful kick on him, usually. Yeah. Yeah. Good runner, Olsen. Yeah, he'd, he'd clock up the K's, I reckon, in the game of footy, coming from centrals, especially on those big ovals he's had to play on. Yep. He'd definitely have a lot of run in those legs. So, Haynes again. You notice Haynes is racking up the possessions, but, uh, well, there's a blemish, and yeah, Blake gee, Penny. big Blake Penny. He'd have to be best on at the moment. He's had a lot of it. Oh, oh nice grab. No nice jukes. Great yep. Grab. Not hard, well nice left footer. I think he's got a good opportunity to kick it from here. Back him in here, do you? He's probably on the he's, 50. He's, prob he's not sure. I haven't seen enough of him kicking far. Well, how's that breeze too, Peter? Is it, is it going a little bit I think it's going a bit the direction the of left? the gullies at the moment. Yeah. But maybe a bit left as well. That's what it's feeling like Ooh. at the moment. See how he goes. Well, we're right behind him here. Yeah. Right behind him. It looks like he's flushed it all right, but... Distance wasn't a problem, but it just pushed it left. So uh, they're certainly getting it down there. Opportunities. 
I've been impressed with the turnovers. As we say, you don't always get a, a one end to the other end, and I think yeah, Petra Gully are playing quite well, and the pressure uh, has been fantastic. Now look at Big Blake, he's pushing into Lysette. Yeah. Lysette won't like that, because yeah. I saw him doing that last week, and he tried to assert his strength around yeah. the ground, Lysette, but uh, Big Blake Penny will be able to match him. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing. This is a great match. Oh, Lysette coming off now. <laughs> That was so, the thing. in the change rooms. We got told put the pressure on him. Walk districts, give him, give him everything we can. So I was just going to say, Penny should now. He's up against Samuel McCoy. Did well last week for Port District, but Penny's just, uh, uh, yeah. As long as he keeps his head on, which I think he's pretty level-headed with yeah. his football, he'll and play. There's my brother Jordan Personos taking the grab. So it's going to. <laughs> he's a backman and you're a forward. Yeah. So what happened when you were kids? You yeah. played in the back yard. It would have been an interesting battle. Yeah, well the same height until about ten, and then he just kept growing. So it took, oh, okay. took over me, I reckon. And who, who's the elder of the two? I'm the eldest of the two. Oh, well, yeah. seniority yeah. takes place. Surely I'll yeah, go up yeah. forward. You can be the backman. Yeah, I'll be the forward. Well, there we are. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Haynes again, as we said, he's gone wide this time to this side of the ground. This looks like Dinehoff, is it? Yeah, so he elects to play on once again close to the boundary. Brings oh. it just oh, as we speak. Oh. Out on the Exactly floor. what we've yeah, said. That pressure again. And and so there it is, he ran towards the boundary. <laughs> play I'm not sure he went with the banana then. But... Riley Vera wasn't happy with how the ball came back from <laughs> no. the court supporters oh, there, so yeah. they're all involved. He just hooks that ball a little oh, bit. Oh, oh two well put. Each other. Yeah. Cody Tape around the corner. Oh, big collision. Can they get out? They seem to have numbers, but they're running contest, laterally. Yeah. Gaffney there on his left. He's been quiet today. He's been a very good player last week. And Niskahus. So the quality comes to the fore, but oh, oh. just down ground there. Yeah. As it was fortuitously, well, it was a person off that was going to get that as yeah. well. Yeah, Someone needs to stand players. the mark here. Yeah, Gaffney's always been one of those damaging players in the back line against us. Yeah. So Niskahos, is it? No, so it's down the ground. Here it goes once again. So he's oh. gone. Uh, big, loud call in the forward line and, yeah. and just missing there was uh, Passaniti. So it's up and down. The gullies are going to get out again here. This is a controlled kick, Peter, that needs exactly to work. Right. Or put Tyson, up the grass in oh, front. Tyson two on one over here. Oh, he's won the contest. Yeah, Brody Latham. Brody just needs to hold it in, and that looks like it's going to be holding the ball, unfortunately. So Port District's going to have another opportunity to go into the forward 50. Oh. It's Gaffney with the ball. <laughs> Port District just calmly moving it forward. Oh, that's a beautiful kick. So he was in the ruck a moment ago, Samuel McKay, and he's now going to line up for goal. So they, they do like moving the players around, and as yeah. we saw Lysette uh, coming off the ground, he's still on the bench here. So uh, he has taken a mark about 40 out. Yeah, he's gone in for goal. I'm not sure about how this guy plays football at the moment with the goal kicking, but we'll have a look right now. And it looks like he's kicked it. Oh, he's hit the post. Just he put it up high in the <laughs> air too, didn't he? So as we said, joined by a, a lot of guests today, uh, first quarter, Peter Personoff. Fantastic to get an insight from you, Peter. Who have you found uh, on this kicking? Who have you found uh, the difficult opponents from uh, from Port District that you've played on in the past that might uh, be playing today? I've always, I've always had to me and Dougie Gregg played on each other for years now. A few years, there's always us two battling it out with each other and his brother. And yeah, they've obviously always given me a problem because <laughs> they know we always all know each other how we go about football. Yep. Yeah, it's good fun. Player just uh, taken out accidentally yeah, there. Riley Farrell. Just uh, just got ran into, I think, as he was uh, wide open with that. So yeah, I think the wind's been knocked out of him. Yeah, there. should be all right. Just touch wood, mate. You don't want another three oh, uh, no. loss of interchanges this no. week. Yeah, we'd be happy with none of them on the bench, right? We're, We're ticking well, around a twenty, sorry, twenty minute mark. Two goals, two fourteen. Uh, visitors, which is Port District, one goal, one the Gullies, and uh, well, yeah. It's uh, been a pretty, that... um, pretty contested game so far. So your Ruckman's changed again? Yeah, we've got Just Liam Potts here. down there as Ruck. Yeah, I thought that was him. So this player's coming off winded, or he's... He's just sucking him in, I think. Yeah, but it looks like they're actually taking him over to the boundary line. The trouble if you take him over to the boundary line, he can't come back on, I don't think. Well... Or they're just getting him... He might have done a rib, I reckon. Because once he's off 
if they've taken him off there, unless they're just having a rest almost like in soccer, they haven't brought another player on yet, so we'll just keep an yeah. eye on that, just maybe taking him out of the play. He might have done a rib though, so two three gully here out the far side of the wing. Oh, the big, big clash there. They seem to have that spare back, and you wouldn't believe it, Samuel McKay just at the back of the pack now, it's Haynes. Yeah. Gully's there, player dancing around, very good. Look at the back up there, they're working in the team, and out this side, Zach there McCabe, they can't see him on the wing. I'll tell you what, though, he's out here if it comes to ground. Oh, That's a great kick, it does come to it. ground. They're outnumbered here, Port oh. District. Very well worked and a beautiful kick. Here he is, the danger man, Harry Dwyer. Goes into the pocket, and on his own, he's batty, and, well, I don't think you'll see him uh, passing it off. Excitement machine yeah, and loves geez, that's, goal, buddy. that's Riley Verrill. You know, just be interested to know that uh, that ruling because he's come off on the opposite. Yeah, the same thing happened to me last week. The umpire told me to go straight off the edge, and I thought I had to go through the gate. So yeah. I'm, I'm not sure with that ruling. You yeah. didn't come back on, though. You no, knew it was I didn't gone. come back on. But some players do. I ask that could, so yeah. I'm not really sure how that what ruling goes. And it looks Maybe like it's the it. just pushed it left again. Oh, it's still in play. <laughs> no, it's just point. offline. Yeah, just so another then. point. And that could be costly for Port District. Oh, I think it's been a good 50-50 game. Port District, obviously, more scoring shots. Yeah, exactly. But it's been that battle inside the 50s. Oh, here we go. To the 50s and the 50s. There, go on. Ryan Atherton down to Brody Latham. The glue pot, we call him. He's got the stickiest mitts in the north, I reckon. Or Tyler Martin. So you couldn't quite get that oh. handle over there. Gee, they've attracted a crowd like seagulls to a chip there. Yeah. And uh, might have been high. Just... Oh. Battling that ball along in oh. front of him. Play there. It's a good battle, and the legs yeah. are almost taken <laughs> out there by uh, Deinhoff. Talking about oh, the glue pot. The pressure, yeah, the pressure there. It is, is a uh, beautiful ground now, but uh, yeah. mate, I can tell you, go back, go back to the 80s here. Yeah. Safford Division 2. Uh, we used to come up the Pertering Roval, and you'd be up to your knees in mud. And oh, yeah. Ingle Farm, you wore the white shorts, they were brown for the rest of the year, mate. Yeah, I remember playing against Teacher Gully when I was a junior. Yeah. Coming up here, and it was just knee deep in mud. <laughs> That's a penetrating kick inside the 50s. Oh, oh that's a big high mark too. And that's that was, another uh, one that could be a yeah. mark of the day. Joseph Haynes. So we'll get that down. Yeah, Jordan Persos with the spoil there. Port District. Oh, he slipped the tackle on him. And that's Haynes again. Another start. Looks like Haynes has had a fair bit of the footy this quarter. Yeah, as I said, he just tends to be that spare yeah. back there. A little bit of pressure on the ball carry, so they get two kicks in a row. Both kicks now have uh, hit the ground. As I said, they played very well last last week, but you'd, yeah. probably as the coach would be saying, well, we need oh. to get that a little bit um, a little bit better with our statistics. But it's, I think, the credit to. Uh, Teetri Gully, the pressure. So we see, I often talk about this, Teetri Gully have come up, the forwards have come up. So is that a flood or is it the opposition doing a press? Because it's almost nil all now, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a lot of teams, they try and get everyone within the half of the ground, I reckon, these days. That's, that's how the footy is. It's a bit of a zone press and play. So Haynes just wandering off here with <laughs> oh, the runner. So I'm not too sure whether he's just having a rest or whether he's... Uh, could have blown himself out there. I hope he's just OK. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. So one, two... Out the back, three. No support, so he had to go to the left foot kick, which is smothered. Dwyer it was on the ground, working hard. Players going over like 10 pin bowling pins there. It's up, it's down. Fortuitously to Port District. That's a funny looking angle oh. that he held it on. Up and down. Players all around it. That Olsen was White again. and Breeden there. Oh, look at him go. Chris Olsen down the wing. Two bounces. Randy goes, Three good bounces. shepherd. Yeah, he went laterally with the shepherd. Now Hamble, that's worth a kick. Yeah. Uh, Zach McKay now. Is it? Oh, do we say McKay or McKay? That's McKay, the other... I say McKay. Yeah, McKay. join the club. Yeah, yeah, I feel I at McKay. home. I feel in yeah. home. <laughs> right, oh, no, Greg, it was. So they go and ring a ring a rosy now. Very Josh wide. Spence. Long time in the air. That's almost a grab yeah, almost, off yeah. a punch. Jeez, he goes the long handball there, does Josh Spence. He's going to get it back. He waited for that. Oh, Big tackle ball. came in. You could almost see that was going to happen, and Matthew Rose giving a bit of attention on the, over the top there. It's always easy when you're the top player pushing yeah, down on someone. Phased on his shoulder here. Yeah, that's, uh, gee, that's Kenneth Carpenter. Carpenter. Yeah. So uh, he may be gone for the game. Up and down it goes. 
anyone's ball close to the... Oh, didn't really want to. It was almost like last night. We won't talk about yeah. that. But the player just diving on the ball and He just wanted to sit to over, wait. didn't he? Yeah, that well, was... Well, like uh, last night's game. James White. So let's have a look at Liam Potts here. Good size. Does he protect that space yeah. well and gives it perfectly to Olsen? He can't. Stand on the ground. Olsen goes again. I like that. He's a bit of a contested beast, yep. isn't he? He doesn't just yeah. hit and watch. Yeah, he, he, goes. he gets goes in over. after it. Yeah, Potts, Umpire. he uses his body well. Close to siren time here. Yeah, it wouldn't be far off. Up and down. Round it goes. Another, just a stoppage. A few players here just with hands on hips and having a bit of a breather. It's yeah, it's been one of those games. Yeah. Yeah, a... Look at Penny come on, third man up. Third man up, you wouldn't believe it's life. Oh no, it wasn't life, said it was uh, Liam Ferns. Yeah. But uh, gee, attracted a crowd there. So no one behind, this is my pet hate, no one behind the two ruckmen. If he does go backwards, which he tries to, they fill that space now. That's really just an up and down oh, kick. That's good small, buddy, young fella. Yeah, well done. Oh. Ooh, bang. And that was uh, Jack Hazelhurst, was it? The yeah, young Jack bloke Hazelhurst. here off yeah, the half back fella. flank. He's 18, 19 years old. Yeah, playing on uh, Broden Hawkins and doing a good job there. Yeah. Everyone's matched up. There's a player here. Well, that's the Ruckman. Bang, you won't get anywhere. He ran straight into Blake Penny and didn't go anywhere there. That'll be ours, Jordan. Look out. Anyone's ball, wait for the collision. There it is. Oh, Player went body first then, uh, Rose. Niska's one of their players. Uh, sorry, Niska Hoos. Yeah. Really went body first, trying to yeah, attract we got, yeah, Penny. Yeah, go at it Spence. usually in a game, but off-field, we're all right. Have a nice beer after the game together. He's got some good footy IQ. Spence on his own here at the side of the pack. Penny yeah. sees him too. Can they get it to him? I like this bloke. This is uh, Mitch Napper. Again, yeah. So he's, where, where's Mitch Napper come from? Has he been, he's been up here for a while? He's been yeah. Junior. He's come up through the ranks and yeah. Just, he's uh, a good player. I like him. a few injuries and yeah. All right. We wind around there. One goal, one seven it is at quarter time. Tea Tree Gully to two goals, four, 16 in an entertaining first yeah. quarter. And we will take a short break. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, folks, to the big game down here at Tea Tree Gully versus uh, Port District and a very entertaining game, I might say. And um, it's an absolute pleasure to come and have a chat with these guys or they've come in to join us. And the first one is Sam Damon, the uh, sponsor, Ray White Real Estate, of course, up there on the scoreboard, Ray White Tea Tree Gully. First of all, welcome, Sam. G'day. Thank you very much to viewers as well. It's great to be here. Mate, you're doing great things in and around the Tea Tree Gully area with uh, real estate and also the footy club. And of course, uh, you won't have to talk yourself up because our president, Sean Power from Tea Tree Gully, is here as well. So welcome, Sean. How are you, Tony? Good to see you, mate. Fantastic, mate. And uh, close game out here at the moment. Tea Tree Gully just in front. But the uh, pressure on the scoreboard has been sensational by uh, Port District. So it's a nine-point lead as we speak to Port District and uh, well I'll tell you what um, Port District are out already Tea Tree Gully still in the huddle so while while that's happening we'll just say, say a, a very quick chat with Sam mate some of the stuff you're doing with the um, uh, volunteer work and Novita and that just take us through a couple of the ones and of course you did win the Russell Ebert medal which was yeah. fantastic now look, we uh, we love to support where we can, so uh, so and it's always a great great uh, uh, great vibe around the place on the mighty river run. It's amazing if you ever get the chance to, to meet us on uh, on route one time. We uh, we'll be heading out in November again this year. So mighty river run is fantastic. Of course, the Navita uh, uh, variety bash we do as well, and it's just great to be part of. Yeah. Oh, and uh, very quickly, the medal, mate. You've won the best and fairest yep, inaugural normal, medal just so before the, the ball goes up here. Yeah, definitely take us for the great man. So last year was a tribute album for for the great man Russell Eber and uh, it was nice to, to put a lot of effort into the auctions and uh, they gave us a nice little medal so the best of Ferris and Wall was given us great. Alright well back to the footy here and it's been a great match up with uh, Blake Penny and Lysette of course both big men uh, don't really get off the ground and a hack out there and fortuitously falls into the hand of uh, Liam Ferns and Sean I know you started your day very early uh, up there in the canteen you're, you're a man that does a lot of stuff around here as the president, it's not just uh, be seen and walk around the place. It's it's putting your hand up and you know helping out in areas where you need it, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, mate. You know, so um, look, we know when we play at home, we do draw a, a rather large crowd, and especially when we play traditional teams like Port Districts, um, you know, very similar uh, style club to us. So. Uh, it's important to get up here and just get things organised and help out where you can and uh, make sure things are just ticking along nicely throughout the day. And speaking about ticking tickets there, yeah. <laughs> I reckon he's uh, been best on yep. and uh, him and Lysette are having a good battle. Lysette's been out there bumping a few other blokes and that's a good grab here, Liam. Uh, sorry, that's uh, Tyler, West. Tyler West, isn't it? Yeah, so just pointing with the finger, look, out to the right there. Yep. And Great to have that big man back as well, so... Nice Zach grab McKay. too, and this is uh, Zach McKay taking the mark. Yep, Zach should get this from there, so uh, he's, uh, he's up and about. Sad to see Alex go, but it's great to see Zach yeah, still here. And, so and, uh, with Zachy, he, um, he's not a big goal kicker either, so I'd expect a half-decent celebration if he kicks this. And Sam, you can call, because have a look, he's right by the Ray White Tea Tree Gully there you go. real estate sign, mate. This, this will be a good uh, Kodak moment. Here we go as he lines up for it. Look at the biz. Get up and about, and he misses. Oh, one of the best points ever but scored. To, to right in front of another one of the great sponsors there, Rock Solid as well. So, uh, so good on Zach. He'll get one soon. You're a very humble man. So let's have a look at the kick in here. Joey Haynes. He uh, normally kicks long, but he's a beautiful use of the ball, short or long. And Doug Grigg, well, the captain today, and just a little bit st static, a bit of a tempo. And uh, here's a good mark up. Yep. As ball goes near the boundary, Good over it comes. Three on two. Dude's worked out well there, Port District. They run now. Can they get it up to Niskahus? They can't. He's dragged off it. Players battling there. Young bloke there. Couldn't quite take it. Came quicker than what he was ready for. Strong tackle there. And a bit of local knowledge there, Sean. It's uh, 2.52, mate. Is that the 3pm... Uh, Qatar into Adelaide that's just going over the top of us there? Yeah, it probably is. Um, we are right in the... Uh, flight zone here, yeah, I love right it, the mate. Flight flight me aeroplanes. Yeah, you get a few flying over the top. So. All right, well, I'll be picking your brain all afternoon on which, <laughs> which, who they are and which company, and we'll see if we can get a sponsorship up and going. 
maybe parachute out a ball one day. But anyway. I, I must admit, when we come over the hill, come back from a flight, I always do, do look down, actually. Absolutely. A little bit of a tear. Not only if I can see my house over the mountain, eye. but of yeah. course, see the scoreboard. <laughs> and the office, of course, just down the road. So there yeah. it is, Lysette, just that push on Penny. Just a hat kick forward. It's anyone's ball. And that's a great contest because uh, no one player was in front of the other. And yeah, Tyler Martin, good call there. Just gets out. This guy runs himself into trouble, ducks under. But have a look where he's put that ball into a dangerous position. Coming at it, Tea Tree Gully player couldn't take it. They've got Haynes out the back. Watch for this kick. Will it get inside 50? Not quite. Ooh. Jeez, I'll tell you That's what, right. you can't. Uh, you've got to be careful how you go about your defence work these days. And this is Samuel McKay with ball in hand. That was uh, Ryan Heffernan defending him. It just came up to was it? Uh, yeah. his first game of A grade for the year. Okay, and uh, well, it's Batty by the looks of it. And uh, yeah, he'll probably go back and have a have a shot here, and you'll see him run in, and once again he'll be in front of the Ray White T Three Gully scoreboard. Fair dinkum, Sam, you are everywhere. Mate, I, I love your segue to that, but uh... <laughs> well, he is. Here he goes. Hopefully, he puts them off. <laughs> Gee, that's a high kick. He stopped to read the scoreboard on the glide by, and he's kicked a uh, a point, so he hasn't got the that's kicking right. points on today. Uh, young Batty. So isn't a great look at the hill today as well, guys. Weather's fantastic. Have a look, everyone's out and about today. Well, you touched on that, uh, well, Sean, did, you know, it is, it's got the feel of a country footy game here. Mm. Good crowd, huge yeah, crowd. Absolutely, look, it's, um, it, we, we think it's the, the best ground in Adelaide, to be honest, probably in the country. It does have the traditional country feel. You can bring your cars in and you can park them all right around the oval. It creates a great atmosphere, uh, especially uh, when you have two good teams like this today having a good hit out. All right, so uh, Cody Tape was just trying to have a go in the middle. As we said, the two Ruckman battle, it's, it's really been nil all in the taps, but I think that Blake Penny around the ground has really given Teetri Gully a good impetus here, and he does a lot of work. You'll see them come in here. We, we talk about the size. They probably won't get off the ground or an inch or two if they do. There it is, just that raw battle. Lysette elects to grab it, does the rugby kick. Well, he goes the wrong way. He's on the ground. The, the more times they fall over, the harder it is to get up as they come past. And now, uh, great boundary umpire just gliding by here, Guido, of course. And so, shout out to the boundary umpires. Doing a great job as uh, off the half-back line. Now, that's a high kick. A little bit of that playing in the Tea Tree Gully's hands, Sam, with those mm. high kicks today. Yeah, they are. The wind's just coming across, I reckon. And, uh, and either way, we're... Um we're going to get a few more goals, I can feel it. So ball up. It, it certainly is, as they, uh, as once again, tickets does the job. Bit of groundwork there as we get as we go. You can see uh, just behind the play here, Port District's got a, quite a few players just set up behind the ball, just waiting for it to come in. So I think uh, foul boys can just lower the eyes a little bit mm. and uh, they might start finding some targets up forward. So that's interesting, long way backwards to go forward, isn't it? They, they actually haven't gone forward at the moment. No. And we can look at the uh, filming footy footy stats through the week and pick up that they've had a lot of possession, Port District, but where are they going with that possession? And then they play in the Tea Tree Gully's hands here, this kick yeah. down the ground. Um, and I know, Sam, you, know, you, you will watch the footy as a, an observer and you, you come to every game up here and so on. And then the beauty of it is, Sean, fresh out of coaching. So yeah, you, you've got year. that... That side of uh, things that we're looking at is that ball on the far side. So, so ball in, yeah, just so about into the forward line there. If you have a look there, they've got two players set up behind the ball at the moment. So, like I said, every time it keeps coming in, we keep, uh, Teacher Gully keep finding a Port Districts player. But um, going back the other way, there's obviously two spares up the other end now. So it's um, just a little bit of uh, back and forth at the moment. So Haynes and Niskahus combining in the middle. But they were under pressure, and we were talking about this. You'll often see, you won't see the ball go coast to coast very often. And it'll, it'll go two or three kicks, and it'll come back. A little bit of a battle, not so much between the lines today. It does get inside 50, but like we saw there, great territory battle, and Teetree Gully able to uh, free that up and get that out. Players with a sense of theatre there, playing the ball on the far side, making it hard for everyone to, to see. But the beauty is we have the, uh, the vision on now our live stream. So thanks to uh, Dartfish and Filming Footy for that. As Tea Tree Gully now, player calling for the 50, is that, I'll get these two mixed That's up, is that Tyler, Tyler West? West? Yeah, it's good to have Reggie back. Um, yeah. He's just come back from uh, 
a, a hiatus after an ACL injury. So uh, Noah Hyde, he's just put that in and that. Oh, he's put it down, Brody Latham. It's been pushed around, it's come out. Jack Asprey in his 100th game. Gets it on the boot, yeah. has he? He yes. has. Excitement in the box here. Beautiful. And even last year, as, as Tyler West was, of course, off with that ACL, he was a great man to have around the club, wasn't he, as well? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, look, unfortunately for Tyler, he did do it in the pre-season, right on the back end of the pre-season. So yep. he um, he is probably one of the highest IQ footballers that we have here at the club. So he jumped, um, you know, he, he took it. He took it on the chin, the injury, and he jumped straight into the coach's box and sat along Justin and the team and um, was a great asset to the boys last year. Definitely. But definitely uh, great to have him back out on the field. Yep. As we've got Elliot coming on as well, so great to have him. It was a nice, this morning with Peter Martin giving him his, uh, his Guernsey as well in there. So great little moment for first uh, A-grade today for... Um, uh, for Elliot, the great man, for Elliot. Elliot, Elliot Brogdon, um, yeah, so he's had quite the journey. He, um, he played his juniors here. He um, wasn't sure about footy and we, we gave him a phone call and that was thanks to Pete Martin. He said to give the kid a call and yep. get him back out here. And um, unfortunately, through his journey, he did lose his dad where he, he probably lost his way a little bit in that time. That's a mark. That's Liam Potts, is it? Pottsy? No, Potsy's it's Reggie. Out there, but Reggie's no, got it. That was Reggie. a good mark. Um, so, but yeah, Elliot the last few years has really cracked in. He's in the uh, the B grade leadership group, and um, he's had a massive preseason. And it's just great to see someone get reward for effort and um, to get his A grade debut today. Fantastic! Mm. We wish him all the best. Proud moment for himself and the family. Absolutely. As uh, this is Liam Potts. Uh, no, uh, sorry, Tyler uh, West. Sorry, Tyler Reggie's West. on. Here he comes. This will be a good one for him. There we oh, go. We'll get around there, him. There, definitely. Yep, a few sausage rolls for the great man. And you got about uh, four of the juniors coming back this year as well. So uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so um, lucky enough, we, uh, we did uh, have a lot of juniors come back this year. So we've had uh, James White, uh, Chris Olsen, um, obviously uh, Adam Machotta, who was our Div 1 Premiership player, come back as well. Liam Potts, he played his juniors up here, so yep. it's great to have um, them four boys back in the club and uh, wearing the uh, the red and black this year. Yep. In today, yeah, Mitch Napper's come in for his first hit out for the for the year. We've also got Jack Hazelhurst that's come up. Mm. He's looking good. Ball out of the middle here. Sister goes well as well, don't she? Thomas She's... Carter. Uh, yeah, Charlie Hazelhurst. Yeah, absolutely. So part of the uh, the uh, Sample Women's Program. Yep, got to give her a mention. All right, so just come back with footy here for a moment. That's Olsen. That's now. Chris, Chris Olsen. He's kicked Lightning. that ball out and then got that back again. Here so he's go. worth two Elliot plays. Wilson. Good battle here. So just close to the boundary there, and Greg it was just taking it over the line. So uh, Guido, good footwork there, and. Uh, this young man throwing this ball in is sensational Blake with Chatter. I often see him at the gym and uh, good all round guy and very fit man. Gets that ball in. Look at that. Will it go behind? It doesn't. Lyset and Penny both hit the same way. Taken in the tackle, but I'll tell you what, Does just well. that one inch. Yep. Tyler Martin there. Got it into a dangerous position. Can they get it up? Anyone's ball. Just pushing it forward there was Brogdon. And T3 Gully just quickly, Sean, happy with getting a stoppage and ball ups, I reckon, some of these uh, points of play. Yeah, absolutely. Look, um, as soon as we get it inside that forward 50 line, if we can't get our hands on it, we're happy to take the stoppage to reset. So Potts it was, couldn't quite. Not getting all their own way here, uh, Port District, on the outs. So they kick at the grass here, and the foot race is on. I'll tell you what, Howie Dwyer, hasn't he got a set of... Uh, Set of jets on him. Gee, there's players lining up. Big Blake Penny again in the middle. Gives a handball off. This is the young bloke, is it Hazelhurst? Hazelhurst. Yeah, and a beautiful kick. Long penetrating. They're going to give it up. Just on that half-back flank, probably the unnecessary handball, but Gaffney racking them up now. Cooper Gaffney. Gee, he had to stand and wait there. Tried to penetrate the kick. Couldn't hit the player. Anyone's ball, gee, I'll tell you what, Big attracts ticket. the crown. Penny there. Gee, that was great work. And fantastic... To see your leader of the club, the captain, and we have a bit of fun with Blake, but uh, he's a very serious man with his football. 
to see that kind of effort, Sean, is uh, just sensational. Yeah, absolutely. Um, tickets as well this year has taken on our C-grade coaching role, which is more of our development squad. So uh, he's getting around the boys, does a mountain of work around the club, but um, it's just a tremendous leader out in the field. So interesting that third man up rule and uh, players not liking it there. And that's, well, Tyler Martin, what a great photo that is. He's got two players on him. They protect the space. The crowd up to our left here are, are on fire. And, uh, well, umpire's called high. And that was that pressure kick in again. So Port District not really getting their own way. Three goals to the Gullies, 20. Visitors, 2 five, 17, And, well, they've only scored the one point for this quarter. Mm. Yeah, a bit of momentum there from the Gullies. So. Yeah, so Passanidi it is. He elects to go across the ground. No, no meterage gain, but Grieg with ball in hand. So Port District... This tempo is, I keep saying, it's playing into Tetri Gully's hands. All the midfielders can get back. Everyone can be covered. They elect to go short. And you'll notice all of our forwards as well, they get up behind the ball so they can help protect and, uh, and cover off. Yeah, we asked Peter Personos about that because is it, is it forward line pushing up the ground to cause a flood or is it the back line pressure, uh, press sorry, of Port District? It's, it's almost a nil all when they do it. We talk about this, we've got one of the largest grounds or playing areas in sport in the world and yet we make it a small-sided game. Mm. A little bit bigger today though, the teams are still spread out a bit and I'm, just see players going at it. Big Blake Penny there doing a mighty job in ruck. He's everywhere. He is, yeah. Not not having much of a rest. Batty, he been trying to get on for about five minutes here. Just waiting and uh, interchange guy just having a chat to him or assistant. It's out on that far wing. Just coming around there. Well done by Cody Tape. They run inside now. Running well, Tree Gully. Right on that 52 on one. Geez, I tell you what, it bounces fortuitously here. One, two goes Tyler Martin. He's had to have a look at the goals. I'll tell you what, he's had to have a look at it. He's kicked it. Yes. That is absolutely sensational there. Tyler Martin, he gets his on the board. And, uh, well, what a great goal. And Tetri Gully, very good quarter they have here. They've kicked, uh, well, I reckon they've kicked two or three for the quarter. It's good to see uh, Tyler Martin moving up forward. I think he previously was playing out backs, isn't that right, Sean? Yeah, so uh, last year Tyler was playing as a bit more of a, a key defender, um, yeah. but he is a, a utility. He can go through the middle, he yep. can go forward. Yep. Um, he's just the uh, the ultimate professional. Um, you see him at training, he's the first here, he's the last to leave. He looks after himself really well, but he gets uh, plenty of reward for effort. So. Um, yeah, good on Tyler, and that was an outstanding goal, two yeah. on one, and to get it around him. Well, yeah, I was going to say three, three opponents, pretty much, and then he, you know, to finish with that kick, Penny again, out of the middle. It's been all T3 Gully this quarter as we get around to the 15 minute mark. So uh, Josh Ramsey's got a bit to work on here at Port District. Ball out of bounds, and you can hear the crowd up to our left. They're cheering even and out of bounds because it's that pressure on Port District who really turned it on last week. I know we came up, we did an interview with yourself, Sam, and also Justin through the week, and he said, you know, the scoreboard really last week wasn't the story because you had the three interchanges that you lost. So, you know, a lot of people might be uh, looking at that score last week going, oh, the gullies weren't so hot, but have a look today mm. with 21 players. Yep. And uh, very good. Yeah. I like this bloke. He's probably just popped that out. Commentator's curse there, out of bounds on the full. Uh, Mitch Napper, but he's showing some signs today. Really like the way he gets around. Athletic type of player. Blake Penny's back here, so watch for him up here on uh, Samuel McKay. It comes this way. Pack sets. There he is. Oh, and a strong mark from the great man. They just played into his hands. Well done. And that's going to be a danger for Port Districts today. Don't keep kicking it to Penny, the, uh, well, he's the magnet there. Gets it out this time. Adam Machotta. Gee, Nice left foot Good kick, leg. flying high too. Braden, uh, how do we say that? Rack, Rackwell? Rackwell. Rackwell. Port District now. So it's going between the 50s. There's Batty, who was waiting a long time here on the interchange bench. Just chips it up, oh, gives well it done. enough time, and Jack Hazelhurst chips in and the switch of play. Yep. Getting in front there. It's nice as they, as they come around the corner. Adam shot in. It's great to see him back here as well. So here we go. And tickets. Nearly got a hand on it. Could have been a set play because then he gets the boundary throwing. <laughs> I see the Ray White uh, Tea Tree Gully 
sign on the back of the jumpers as well. I tell you what, you are everywhere and on the far wing, and it's a credit to you, uh, to what you do out here, Sam. And uh, obviously, you're doing good things because the president's sitting next to you, and you two haven't had a blue, so uh, yeah, no, all is good. Great partnership with the club as well, and, and of course with the juniors too. It's, um, it's great to see them all coming through the ranks, and it? it's great to see the young ones coming up. Yeah, absolutely, and, that, and that's probably something to mention as much as. Um, Sam uh, is a great supporter of our senior teams here. He also does a lot of great work with our, our junior teams. He, um, he's a sponsor of our Under Nines Carnival, uh, which we he held earlier this month. And uh, as the play goes on here. It's a great play, sorry there, by Brody Latham. He yeah. pickpocketed really Port then and went back and had a second effort. There's that pressure again and a good grab, Machado again. And uh, Sam, you mentioned Machado. Uh, just his last five minutes have been really good. Yes, yep. I mean, it's uh, it's always it's a pleasure to watch you, mate, and uh, and certainly always brings a lot of effort to the game. Oh, Just set it up off the back line, but unfortunately there, Tyler Martin, and he's got the 25 metre. Nothing too harsh in that. It, it happens nowadays. Back, I don't know what you were like, Sean. Back in my day, we used to do penalties, but of course, uh, the first year I coached, I was a playing coach for six games, and I got a send off. I was the one that had to do the penalties as the coach, so <laughs> so we don't do the penalties so much now. And if running is a penalty and running's part of your game, we don't use running as a penalty. Think, so uh, we think, play on. I think you find the penalties these days uh, they got to come from the pocket. So oh, I like that. Think, There's uh, the president talk right there. <laughs> yeah, Tyler will be um, probably hit up with a little fine during the week for that little 25 metre by the boys. Yeah. But it's good to see the the lads. They hold each other accountable. For we might the... have a couple of guests on the footy trip, Sam. What are you doing around <laughs> September, October? Probably October, mate. And, well, well, if I've they keep giving away the... one of those, I'd love to actually. Oh, let's oh, well. get a bus and we'll all go. <laughs> Bring the commentator. What happens on the trip hey, stays on the trip. It wouldn't be a bad idea taking the major sponsor with you, would it? Go. It is. <laughs> It'd be great. Yeah, get it. Get ready though. You get hit up when the boys have had a few. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Far side. You can see the uh, players just uh, having a bit of fun there. A bit of push and shove. Lisa Mann up on the scoreboard as well. She always goes well, doesn't she? Oh, OK, she yeah. It. Bit of commentary all over, over there. All, all over legend. social media. <laughs> and, uh, well, Batty it is. Ball in hand, Port District. Just got the free kick there, bottom of the pack. He's going to kick this from right in front of the scoreboard. He hasn't had the kicking boots on today. Normally a well-known uh, goal kicker. So just wanders in now. He likes that off the boot. Oh, and post. he's uh, hit the post. He was almost going a bit early with the celebration, and uh, there's what happens. Geez, the deck looks good this year, Sean, as well, as we uh, come out of cricket season as well. It's, you happy with it? Yeah, mate, absolutely. It's always a, a pleasure to be playing on this ground at this time of year, especially when it's still nice and warm like it is at the moment. It's a Martin, it was good grab. Nice, strong grab. There we go. You Brody's never compete. given up. Yep. Good. And then he goes back in, second second attempt, and gets there. Potty, potty, rock. It's one thing you're going to get with Brody Latham. If he uh, doesn't win the contest, he's definitely going to halve it. Yep. And he's won himself a free kick here, I think. I think he that it. effort he there. Definitely it, earned it. Yeah. It, it, three, three or four goes at it. We saw him slip over the first time. You yeah. might have to have a talk to him about the boots, mate. Fair <laughs> dinkum. But he, he slipped over, but he kept going. Sorry, kept going and. Uh, well, he comes up with the free. What an outstanding piece of play. Yeah. It's, it's probably one thing that uh, Brody's really well known for is keeping his feet. So to see him slip over like that, it might be uh, the boots. But, um, yeah, it's not something you see very often. Big fly here. Great defence there by Geordie Personos, punching Ooh. it forward. Got a player down there, Jack Hazelhurst, back on his feet. Good shepherd. James White takes him on. Browns wheels around. Great left foot. Good grab there. Lysett just looking a bit tired there, and Blake Penny's running run rings around him. I tell you, that was uh, Jack Hazelhurst, who just looks like he's come off the horse on race seven, and he's bumped into Lysett and uh, didn't mind it. Yeah. Just quietly, a good little shepherd, as yeah. you call, great defence. That closing speed by Ryan Heffernan. Yes, absolutely. So just super, beat him out of bounds then. Super talented kid, uh, Ryan Heffernan. So Lysett's gone forward now, and he's got, uh, well, Jordan Personos on him. Yep. Jordan turns around and goes, oh, gee, land of the Giants here. Mm. But get it to ground, punch and run. 
against the big blokes. Chris Olsen coming back on has had a good game. Oh, taken out of the air there, Zach McKay. Around we come. So two on one, but Tietri Gully have done all right in this uh, today. Haynes now under a bit of pressure. Good set of hands to have it in. Draws the play, gets it over the top. A little bit of slow motion as we get into the 22 minute mark of the quarter. Pressure on the Port District's players. There, and we talk about that pressure. That's about pressure. the third kick in a row now that's just gone up and down by yep. Port Districts. The runners come now to go towards Lysette. Has he got He's anything got left in tank? He's played on. No left foot, so he has to go on the right. He's Miss hooked it too far. He liked it, but uh, and don't the crowd <laughs> give it to him. So uh, three points versus three three goals, one for the quarter. It's so Tetri Gully in front on the scoreboard. And gentlemen, uh, entertaining game. Yeah. For sure. Can't really pick a winner just yet. Tetri Gully with numbers around the ball. They give it to the one solitary uh, Port District player. Olsen fresh on. He'll have fresh legs. Geez, I'll tell you what, he's hooked it into that middle bit. But it was the panic kick, so Sam McKay takes it. Not able to. Just got a finger to it. It was West. So the run forward here by Monty Stash. Good thump. Nice punch, wasn't it? Riley Verrill, mm. worth a kick. So you had to do a lot there, Lysette below the knees. Comes back, that was almost the mark. Big tackle. Maybe not the distance. Uh, how did you see that, Sean? Maybe not the distance there? Yeah, not sure if it was not the distance or it was touched, but... Um, yeah, Just make something up, mate. We'll, so, solid, we'll tackle. Yeah. solid tackle. Solid tackle. That's Around the corner now. Anyone's ball uh, up high. Look at the numbers once again, the gullies. They line up, there's three or four of them. This is Tyson Bruden with ball in hand. Good old Tyson. He's hitting up Noah Hyde there in the middle. Good call out here. Chrissy Olsen gets it on the boot, but it's all Port Districts. Not great. Well done by Rackwell. Hi. Oh, holding the ball. It's a quick call, wasn't it? Uh, I think even the Port District person next to us said he was a bit stiff there. <laughs> it's actually the other way. And, well, Liam Ferns, who had a firm hold on him. But we'll play on. We don't worry about the umpiring. They see it as they call it as they see it, and they're doing a great job. Out it comes again, Olsen. See, that, that rest that he had must have done him the world of good. Look at the possessions he's picking up. So great coaching by Justin Machado and a real battle of two really great coaches out here. Taking a bounce there, Ryan Heffernan. Just gives it the grass, but quick feet, James White. Mm. Nice work. This is uh, Tyson Breeden again. So they come into the middle, which is what Port District were doing last week. You see four Port, the, Port District players there. Watch the kick here from Haynes. He'll have a bounce. He'll almost have a shot. Big hit. Didn't bounce. And that's what he can do. That's no surprise to the people uh, at home watching going, wow, what a great goal. Mm. Yes, it was. But that's what Joey Haynes can do, running off half-back line. Yeah, There's definitely the right option there in the middle to try and hit up Tyler, but um, wasn't able to, to hold on to that one. And... Um, Unfortunately, yeah, Port District's had all the numbers there, so um, here we are on the replay. Yeah, gets it out, and like you said, Tony, big on kick 50 there. on yeah, 50. On a run. Great leg and finish as well. So it's the one they needed. So 4 2, 26 plays, 3 7, 25, and a fantastic game down here at uh, Perderinga Oval. Thanks to Adelaide Footy League and our scoreboard brought to you by Sportal and Hahn, ultra low carb. Great taste. Ultra low carb. How good. Real How good. <laughs> Fantastic. As it comes around. You got a slogan for Ray White, Tea Tree Gully? Uh, we just love to join the journey with it, whatever they need in real estate. Uh, think of Sam's us, Ray White, Tea Tree Gully. There's plenty of Ray White offices out there, but uh, the Tea Tree Gullies support the local and support the area. So Brodie Latham it is. Let's, uh, let's, have a, let's have a look at him, Sam. You can call it As through for us, up. Mate. Got a good feeling about this one. Probably 45 air to kick it from. Yeah. No. Hardly any wind at all today. No, he's... Hopefully get a mark in there, but otherwise it's uh, it's come back out. Under a bit of pressure though, isn't there? So that's uh, Just didn't see Harrison distance Hawkins. There, did he? No, and you know, it could come straight back in again, mate, quite quickly. The midfielders were set up. You see uh, Tyler Martin there 
jogging across. I'm looking for the wings on this side to see if they stay out. Mm. There's a lot of players around, and, and then it's probably 40 metres back to the next pack. So let's see what happens here. And a, a fair few players just sniff around that forward line there, Sean, as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, look, I think T Tree Gully right here will be uh, either looking for the stoppage or the goal, either one. So, no problems keeping all the, the players in there. Um, but, yeah, they'll be Does looking to get, what? Their, get their hands on it and uh, put it through the big ones. I heard a whistle then. I thought it's here, but it must be out the back. They've got another game out the back there. I thought that might have been dropping the ball. D's not going to be out the back, so. Gee, Sam, you're all over it, mate. That is sensational. So, uh, coming around now, Port District, and you hear the size, but you'd be happy with that, Broden Hawkins, just taking it across the line, so we get a throw in, because, uh, of course, last touch, but if it's a, a disputed one, well, you get the throw in, so the band round pyre over there brings it in. Plenty of energy in that throw. Up and down the gullies, numbers around the ball, but Rose, haven't called Rose a lot today, a very influential player last week, but... Probably has been around it, just haven't called him, so uh, up it goes. Look at that battle. Big Liam Potts. Gullies. That's a good... That kick has just got distance on it. Haynes is going to be in trouble there because he took the ball as it came to him and the players came as well. His turn to tackle, which he does do, and that brings us... Oh, wheeling out of the pack for Gullies there. So it brings us to half-time. That's four goals, two, 26, Tea Tree Gully, and three goals, seven, 25 to Port District, a one-point lead, mm. Tea Tree Gully. Uh, we thank Sean Power, the president of Tea Tree Gully, and also Sam Doman doing great things down here, Sam, with Ray White Real Estate, Tea Tree Gully, the sponsor. Thank you both very much for joining us and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank Thanks you, to the Tony. Prez. Big year for 2024 for this club, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you every, each and every week. Tony, good on you. All right, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Good on you, Tony.
welcome back folks. A big game down here, Tea Tree Gully versus Port Districts. And uh, well, we've had some guests. We've had Peter Personos, uh, Tea Tree Gully injured player. We've had Sean Powell, the president of Tea Tree Gully, and Sam Doman, the major sponsor with Ray White Real Estate down at Tea Tree Gully. And well, we've got to share the load. And it's a pleasure to be joined by uh, a couple of great friends of ours in the Adelaide Footy League down here with, uh, first of all, Darren Hawkins, the president this year at Port District. Thanks, Tony. And uh, Craig Brown, the vice president of Port District. Yes, Tony. How are you, mate? Fantastic. Always a pleasure to catch up with you guys. We uh, we always have a chat and we see you around the place. And, well, a little bit tougher quarter, that second quarter for Port District. So you two, fair dinkum, must be joined at the hip. <laughs> I, uh, I went looking for Craig earlier in the day and, well, Darren was like a metre off him. I'm sure there's a bungee cord or something between you two, but, uh, yes, take us through, I guess, first of all, uh, Craig, how you saw that second quarter? Yeah, I, th I thought Teetry Gully worked pretty hard to get back into the game, Tony. I thought um, first quarter we probably dominated a bit of contested footy and played the ball uh, pretty cleanly, but I thought Teetry Gully that quarter just certainly turned things around. Um, especially around the contested footy. So we see the ball almost trying to come out of the middle there and just as you've said that, yeah, Tea Tree Gully, that first uh, exit out of the middle, around the corner, just a hat kick forward here by Noah Hyde, down on the ground, or charging through Cody Tate, I reckon he put his nose on that ball and, well, Darren, uh, how have you seen, I guess that first quarter they opened up quite well but they were under pressure and now the game at uh, half time really one point in it have you yeah uh, we've seen um, it? discussed it at half time and um you know 11 to 4 out of center clearance is, is a bit ah, of an issue for good. uh yep. for port district so um they're going to try and tidy that up in the second half tony yeah and i see a really handy player there uh joseph haynes has come in this year and, and that goal he kicked I, I called it as he was running down the ground a lot of people said, oh, great goal, which it was, but he kicks it from outside 50, but it's almost like you expect to see that. He's yeah. a beautiful kick of the ball, isn't he? He is, and he, he kicked one last week very similar, but he was running through the middle last week, sidestepped someone at the centre bounce area and bombed it from out, out long, and it, he's, he's well known for his long kicking, for sure. So with recruiting in that regard, uh, if you don't mind me asking, how do you attract someone like that to the club? and? And does he know someone down there already? Was that yeah, the key? He's, he's very close mates with uh, with Matt Rose. Ah, and, yes. Uh, I suppose this year we've just been pretty lucky, haven't we, Craig? We've, um, you know, Sam Gray has always been uh, linked to the Port Districts, and obviously they're from from over in the west, but um, wanted a home club in Adelaide and, and chose Port yep. District, so we're very lucky for that. And. Uh, and then the rest flows with Scotty Lysett because they're all best mates. So uh, yeah, it actually, Tony, it actually goes back to I think about 2014. A lot of these guys played um, an under 18s premiership with the yep. Magpies, and then they all went off and did did different things. And um, the Jason Niskers and the Trent Hefts um, are best mates with uh, Lysett, Gray, and Matt Rose. So when we when we got Matt Rose back from the SANFL. Uh, when his career at that level was done, he he's a former junior, so he was always going to come back. Yep. And Joey Haynes was a close mate, and Joey and Matt's wives are very close. So um, that's how we ended up with Joey. So there's great history there. We see Tea Tree Gully here just bobbling that ball around. It's inside their 50. I'll tell you what, quick kick around the corner and just offline for a point here to the gullies. It's a fantastic insight with uh, Darren Hawkins, the president, Craig Brown, vice president of Port District. Uh, we thank you so much for joining us. And it's great to hear the stories in the Adelaide Footy League. There's Joey Haynes there as we talk. That kick down the middle of the ground. But they've kicked it a couple of times today to Blake Plenty, who at the moment is shaping for a best on. But yeah. gee, he kicks that high into the middle there. But He's the, killing us, to be honest, yeah, Tony. The matchup with lysette has been interesting because the centre bounce is the two big blokes come together, but it's around the ground, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, I'm just trying to work out what the strategy is there by uh, Josh Ramsey, Tony, because he's uh, Lysett's taking the ruck and then dropping back to full forward. So I'm just wondering, we do know that Lysett's probably another two, three, yeah. three four weeks off full fitness. He's had a couple in, of surgeries, yeah. In fact, uh, if the high ruck he had had their way, he was, he was coming back in round three or round four, but Scott's just an absolute warrior. You can't keep him off the park. Yep. Uh, he just wanted to go. 
and that's what you want at, at this level. Like the amount of players that would look up to and go, "Wow, AFL Premiership player," and he's playing. I'm running out next to Scott Lysett. You know, mm. that lifts a young bloke or, or any of the players just just to be out there. So he's he doesn't have to be touching the ball a lot. It's it's just being his presence out there. And tell you what, you do watch him at times. Doesn't mind throwing the weight around just yeah. quietly, which is in the correct way. And I say that in a nice way. You know, like okay, we have send offs last week, but. So did the opposition, you know, um, if you transgress too much. But you're a big, strong body. Play to your strengths. And if that's the way he's going to play, that's fantastic because uh, nothing wrong with a, a bit of legal, vigorous play mm, in yeah. Aussie yeah. football. Yeah, yeah. That's why we love the game, isn't it? Yep, yeah. exactly right. And he's, he's been fantastic for our club already, Tony. He's um, And you only need to look at our Thursday nights and, and uh, the patronage on, on our Saturday nights. Our first Thursday night team selection... Uh, Scotty Lysett was eating his, eating his food on the bar. He couldn't get a seat. The wow. place was just absolutely Fair packed income. out. So he's, he's been really good for us. So you've got a couple of supporters there too, Darren. You're a popular man as the president <laughs> of the club. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's great to hear those because that's the thing that the wider football community don't see. Everyone goes, oh, Scott Lysett's back or, or Jerry Haynes has come in. But it's the little things you see around the clubs and, you know, he doesn't walk in and go, well, I'm Scott Lysett, you give me a seat, I'll just sit at the bar and have my meal. Mm. No, yeah, he's, you know, he's been fantastic. That is fantastic, yeah. yeah. Also with our sponsors as well, he's really made time to get around to some of our sponsors and, and spend the time and get some photos taken that we've used that's, on social media. That's worth its weight in gold, isn't it, really? Yeah. So, uh, ball's been over there in the forward line for the gullies here. They've kicked the two points but haven't been able to capitalise. It's just going around and round. So uh, another, no, umpire's given a free here and it will go the gully's way. Umpire just pointing there, they're lining up almost here and this looks like, could be Cody Tate, we'll just wait and see. A little bit hard on that far side to see what happened there. Jeez, just to your touch wood. Cody so, Tate, uh, Craig, is he uh, ex-Port Districts? Oh, I think we heard that at half time, didn't we? Yeah. Former junior. Yeah. There's yeah. the goal. I'll just see who that is. Let's keep my eye on him. One that slipped away, potentially. Yeah. Played and a good game last week, from what I hear. Kicks the goal and then has to come off. Oh, I'm not a fan. Look, you know, who am I to say I'm not coaching anymore? But, you know, the player's up and about. He's kicked the goal. He gets the cheers of the crowd. That actually was uh, Jack Asprey with his second. So he's... He's a 100-game player, Jack Asprey, so uh, that was nice to see with his second of the day. And, well, they just go ahead here, 10 points in front. We've actually got 150th today, Tony, too, as well. Um, Jason Niskus. Ah, very good. Today. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. So that's very important. And talking about the Lysette Grey uh, matchups, I see on the Facebook page the, the Now and Then. Yep. Uh, photos through the week, and I think they were both juniors, and then going through, then they're at Port, and then then now, and I, you love that uh, linkage and lineage there, bit of your DNA. High kick now up in the air, Tea Tree Gully having to stand under it. Haynes comes, he's an athlete, Nash gives Haynes. it pretty much to his twin there. Yeah, Nash Haynes it was, and no nice relation. Kick forward by uh, Rose. Well, spelt differently, but don't worry, I've got a couple of clients who've got spelling <laughs> differently than their brothers. Oh, here we go, Benny Gould. Crumming that one in the forward line. Good pressure, but they're out here, Tea Tree Gully. I can ask you a question about a player in a moment. Batty, he's a player you've relied on a lot over the years when uh, you didn't have some of the forwards there. This is the player I want to ask the Harry question Dwyer. about. Harry Dwyer last week, he kicked the three, and what he does up forward, his value up forward is just sensational. Can you just give us a bit of an insight on uh, Harry Dwyer, where he's from and... Well, what Craig's probably got more more on his history uh, coming through the juniors, but we're really excited about this lad. He's um, so am I. showed <laughs> showed He's a great some, player. He showed some uh, fantastic zip around the forward line uh, last year, and that's just carried on this year. Perhaps you could tell us a bit more about his. Yeah, um, he's come up through the juniors. Damien Angove, um, one of our former assistant coaches from a few years back, has coached him from about under thirteens or fourteens right through to under seventeens and. Damien's got huge wraps for him, as he does with Liam Modestach as well, the blonde lad at fullback. Ah, uh, yes. Um, they've sort of come through the junior ranks together, so they're pretty good mates. And, um, yeah, Harry's a live wire in the forward line, there's no doubt about it. 
He knows where the goals are. Tyler Martin there, sorry, just in the middle trying to take on two Port District players. And another ball up. And I, I know T3 Gully have played this way a little bit, but I I just reckon Port District don't mind the vigorous side of it as well. Mm. So they don't mind these ball ups. You see the wings come in from this side, so you get more around the ground. A hat kick just out by Sam to, Gray. Uh, just starting to see some centre clearance from uh, Port District, and that's uh, starting to... Uh, uh, tidy up our scoreboard a bit too, uh, Tony. So yeah, This is Chris Olsen with ball in hand. It's a little bit static, which plays into your hands as well. You get that contest. Wow, what a contest. Oh, great, Mark. There's great. a win, isn't it? And he's going to give him one in, in regards to just a bit of strength there. He'd be happy with that. That's a little win there because yeah. it's, it's the game of the mental game as well that's going on on it the is ground. because uh, I, you know, I, pretty much I've got Blake Penny as best on ground at the moment. He's been yep. sensational, you know. And just see if he works off. See, Big Scott now, I like that. He's running when Blake Penny's walking there just to get across again. Oh, a player just uh, punched into there was Sam Gray. Yeah, just wondering whether we see pressure. Scott play more on the ball this, uh, this second half. So Penny's gone right across the far side, but he's ran to Joe Haynes, so I don't know that that's the best thing, unless they can get it over the back here, because if Haynes get this, which here's the battle. And if Haynes had got that, he would have run away with it. Mm. So it's an interesting thing there. But it's good because this leaves Lysette, as you said, he's trotting down forward. The games that are going on here, and I noticed Port District last week were coming down the wing and then kicking inside a lot. They're not doing it as yeah. much today. Yep. One thing we were, that we've identified yeah. over the last couple of weeks is our entries into forward 50. And uh, of note, we had um, Pazaniti in the second quarter, had Scott Lysette. Uh, one on one, yep. yet he chose to go out, out sideways. So the boys have just got to get a little bit smarter as they enter in, in, yeah. into our forward fifty. A structural and, uh, thing, isn't it? Because yeah. you look up, and if he's not there, you might automatically go out to a baddie or or someone else who's who's good in the pockets and that. But then you got a second decision because you look up. Oh, hang on, he is there. Yep. And you got to change to go. Okay, now I've got to kick it down the middle. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So interesting there, and that'll come over the next two or three mark. games as they all gel and get to know each other. You know, yep. Haynes, I was talking to your coach before, players pick up that he'll kick the ball 10 metres past everyone else. They don't set up where you'd normally set up. Yep. Someone get 10 metres behind because that's where he's going to kick it. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So we see a uh, Tetri Gala player here with ball in hand on that far side. We um, Just uh, interesting, uh, Tony, that... Um, I think Port District doesn't have a bench now, so we've lost. Oh, um, really? Yeah, we've yeah, lost Alex Dean off uh, with an ankle. Um, Kenny Carpenter Kenny with a suspected broken collarbone. Was that? And, I saw him come off yeah. with the shoulder. It's and, a suspe suspected broken. And oh, our key sad. forward Tom Carter's gone off with a with a hamstring. So um, yeah, there's not much of a bench left. All right. Well, That's none at all. So game on. No bench uh, injuries. There's that, there's that long kick, Tony, from Joey Haynes. Yep, and Batty again. I, yeah. I love him. Look, he's, he's, I don't know how tall he is. He, he doesn't look that tall, but he's that stocky build. But he, he can play as a tall like that, like super strong hands. He's smart as a football. He's, yeah. Now he's limping. So he hasn't, but he's still calling for the ball. He wants it back as that ball comes down now by Harrison Hawkins. Oh, here it's we go. High ball. Can they win it on the ground? But you see Tito Gully have swarmed down as well. A lot yeah. of their forwards move down the ground. I, I keep saying it in the commentary, you know, is it is it a forward flood from Tetri Gully or is it a backline press from uh, T, uh, from Port Districts? Either way, yeah, there's a lot of congestion. Quick, quick kick oh, into the... Hanging on. And goal from Braden Hawkins. G fortuitously, but, but that's about being in the right spot at the right time. It's not yeah. luck, it's uh, reading the play and, and football IQ and yeah, Braden well, Hawkins brings well, him back Braden in. Braden Hawkins, he's... Yeah. Um, Great player and takes after his father, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't be Darren, would it? Correct. <laughs> Gee, no, that was a, that was a very smart play there because you can see ball, get ball, or run into a pack instead of just being that five or ten metres off a pack. Yep. And that's what happened. So very well done yeah. to the young man, and it's brought you back into a uh, tight game here. The point where you're actually in front by a point as we wind around to um, 13 minute mark. So, just, ball in the middle of the ground. Yep, as we can see, the ball bounces. Broden, front and centre. 
right spot on the left. He's, he's naturally a right footer. Is he? Pops, so it through, pops it through on the left. So, uh, yeah. He had a super game last, last year. He's, he's a, to be honest, he's, he's probably been a bit of a fringe. Yep. And uh, he's worked very hard at his craft and, and fitness, dropped five kilos. So he's, um, he's doing extremely well this year. Well, great insight into, uh, of course, all the players from uh, Darren and Craig. So we're loving this, uh, this side of the commentary where we, we hear a Harry little bit Dwyer more about again. the players. Yeah, look at that. Bang. Oh, falls in. This is what Batty will do. And I reckon it's a uh, bit, um, bit of a coaching ma uh, master stroke here by uh, Ramsey. Yeah, what's he done? Craig, he's in. just uh, he's just pushing. He's he's getting license into the ruck and he's pushing him down deep as full forward. And he's also pushed Sam Gray down as a one-on-one -on -one in the goal square, and that's uh, created a little bit of uh, panic amongst the uh, Tea Tree Gully backmen. I reckon they've got the last three in a row. Have they mm. uh, Port District and just got their nose in front now, 43 to. 36 player coming off. I hope he's all right there. No, yeah, well, I think Lysett's given, given us first use of the ball, which has helped. Um, he he he's, got one, he's, he's coming back. One yep. player on the interchange there, Dinoff, uh, must be able to come back on. So um, He's had the ankle strapped and uh, still yeah. a bit of a limp, but uh, he's another warrior and uh, he'll go. Lysett out the centre. It's been all one way the last uh, probably six or eight minutes, hasn't it? And yeah, Port District that just got that sniff player down for the gullies there. Might be holding an arm. Big congestion again. Yeah, just gets up and rings it. That's uh, Chris Olsen. Yeah. I spoke to the coaching staff at um, half time, Tony, and they weren't panicking. Um, you know, we've got a really strong fitness program under Sean Baker. Sean from, Baker, yes, from Peak correct. Fitness. We'll get a bit of a plug in there for Peak. Who... Um, I'm not sure you've seen on the socials, uh, have just um, gained um, partnered with um, Adelaide Crows uh, Burgess from the LA Crows. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so um, that's like a mentor, a helper, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, a mentor. So we should see him out of Port Districts, we're told, three to, three to five times. So that's going to be handy for us. Wow. But um, we've had a really strong pre season, so we would expect that our guys would run over the top. That's if injuries don't hold us back. So that's a good point, yeah, because yeah. you are down to that one interchange now. As we see a free kick in the forward line, is it? It is. Yeah, Batty. Batty Not again. The ball. He'd be in uh, charge here. Actually. Broden Hawkins, isn't it? Hawkins, is it? Her and if he misses this, Tony, he's not getting dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he might have to hang around T3 <laughs> Gully tonight because you've got it on air and it's up there for life. Yeah. That might have been a set play, though. So you've got two sons out there, Broden and Harrison? That's correct, yeah. Yep, yeah, very good. Third one, uh, Zach, he 2022 Premiership player and he's just retired last year off the back of a bit of uh, concussion. OK, well, yeah. that's sad to hear, but hope you can still enjoy the watching and a uh, big shout-out to Zach and... Uh, Wish him all the best because I often say this, you might play footy for 12, 14 senior years, but you, you've probably got another 50, 60 years of your life to live. Yeah, so, well, you know, you've got to think about your future as well. Absolutely. And I had the opportunity, well, myself and Andrew Marks had the opportunity of catching up with uh, yep. Wendy Smith. Good man, Andrew Marks. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and uh, we all know the, the sad story about Wendy's son who passed away last year in the Hills footy. Ah, yes. Uh, and... Uh, once I sat down with her, it was a, a quick conversation with Zach, my son, to say, mate, you've won a premiership in 2022. Yep. Hang the boots up. Great insight, too. Well, thank you for sharing that, Darren, because uh, you know a lot of people out there wondering about the concussion protocols and what happens and oh. when do we... And I've got a mate in Victoria going through very similar at the moment. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's great to hear that insight. And reaching out to other people uh, and then you summarise the information you're given and decide from there and yeah. once you accept it, you know, I was angry from 31 to 35, my problem was knee injuries but I was, I was an angry coach for four years because I thought in my head I'd played till I was 35 and yeah. back then you didn't have the help that you've got now and uh, yep. it's great that you can have that sort of conversation with yourself and other people around the place and your premiership player for life. Yeah, that's, the that's big it. Thing. That's, that's it. the huge part of it. So and uh, yeah, yeah. It's a special sh uh, shout out to Wendy too. She's doing a fantastic job. 
Uh, I can't remember the exact name of the foundation, but it's to do with can, she jumped on the National Foundation. Yes, yep. That's tackling uh, that issue of uh, concussions, and she's doing a wonderful job. So and massive I think shout out to her. Exactly what you've said, Darren. Uh, it's a conversation that we do have now. Let's not shy away from stuff. It's. Uh, a conversation where you're talking about a young person's future, yep, um, and you know career path and the, the areas that affect. So, fantastic for sharing that with us. It's into the forward line now for Teacher Gully. This way, that way. Can they get a player out free? Gee, I tell you what, he's ran into trouble, but taken high, free almost kick. ducked, and got the tackle. The uh, talk about the physicality and the pressure is there yep. from from Port District, but just that little bit of an infringement. I, look, I know it sounds funny, but from a coaching point, I'd rather see that and give away a free than all stand back and yeah. have 10 outsiders and no one having a go. Yep. As weird as that sounds, but it's a free kick to Brody Latham. Well, it's not Brody Latham. He's, uh, this one, he looks like Noah Hyde in the orange boots. It is. Yeah, I think Latham's it is, yeah. just in front of him, so Hyde it is. On that left foot, trots in. He's happy with it. I tell you what, gentlemen, we have game. a game and a half on here, and uh, that's their second for the quarter, six six thirty six. Yeah, and I just think that that um, that missed opportunity by Broden Hawkins could have, you know, would have put two goal gap in there, Tony, and and maybe maybe played some mind games with T Tree Gully. I think it's just uh, open up the door and. Game on again. Yeah, we've got our, so our number points. one midfield together for this ball up. So Lysa, Matt Rose, Sam Gray, and Jason Niskus. I see Sam Gray there just pointing. He's standing at the back of the pack sometimes, and this time it's uh, Rose. So sometimes you see both Ruckman trying to hit the same way. This time Lysa does hit forward, and they know exactly where they're going. That, that was like last week, him and Gray. They just know certain areas. Some people use the clock and good mark there by That's Haynes. That's a 13 set mark. There's your best quarter. on the ground by a mile. You like him, yeah? Yeah, had about well, 15. A few guys win, he could be. And 15, tu 15 touches in the first quarter. Yeah. Just amazing and a screamer. Go so there it, it is, yeah. Nash Haynes. Yeah, I jotted that down. He did take that grab. 22 minutes 30 for those watching yeah, the replay. Go back Haynes. to it. Mitch is that Gaffney around the shot corner? On goal, oh, the just post. hit the post. So, uh, boy, oh boy, it's what we came for. Close game. So three goals, two for the quarter to Port District. Long kick down the middle of the ground, having to stand under it. Tyler West, a good punch there. Lee Modi Stack. Stack? Stack, is it? Not quite sure how you pronounce stash. it. We call it Modestash. Modestash, I'll say that then. Quick handballs now around Harry the corner. Dwyer. He's just about on 40 metres there and just touched through. And he's a good story as well too, Tony. Uh, Liam Modestash. Yep. Come up through the juniors. Uh, had a year off last year. Decided to go to the Swiss Alps. Oh, as they do, yes. <laughs> gap year. A gap year. And has come back and... Uh, fresh. Bit of altitude training for 12 months. You've got to tell him it, it's That's not it. 12 months altitude. They persist with this kick down the middle, Tea Tree Gully. They're trying to get out. Held on to Greg. I'll tell you what, his second well half last week was sensational for, T uh, for Port District. It's in again, around the corner again. Have a look at that. This is what he can do. Boy, oh boy. And that is just uh, Harry Dwyer again around the corner. Three goals, four. They're starting to pepper the goals now, but they've only got that five-point advantage. Um, kicking two goals, four have been Tea Tree Gully this quarter. So it's going to... Oh, just did he take that step off there, yeah, Noah Hyde? Yeah, I think he was off. Got to play a free here. I, I was talking about this, so if you go boundary, you get the boundary. He looks along the boundary. That's a better kick. They persist with this going up in the air. They want the runners there. They do. Chris Olsen it is this time, but he puts a high ball in. And well done. He looks very calm, Modestash yeah, there. he's very, very, very good. Very and measured. Benjamin Gould, he's a good player. Isn't he? This is the Port District I saw last week trying to bring that ball in. They can't get it going. We talk about this, so you don't often see the end-to-end -end kick in football. Oh, gee, Swamp there is a... Yeah, Swamp. And, well, I can see it's Orange Boots, so it's either going to be Brody Latham, which I think it is this time. It is. And uh, 
We could see what the Port District player was trying to do, but unfortunately Latham goes to ground, buckles the knees, the player goes over the top and he's just, you couldn't see him. So that's, uh, he was smothered. Dougie Gregg, uh, that's the second free kick he's given away in, in a couple of minutes, but uh, he's, uh, he's our captain today, so yeah. um, just Sean costly. Davidson out, but he's just, a, he's just the way he plays. He plays hard and passionate. So uh, let off there. So, yeah, Sean, we spoke about him last week with you guys. Uh, how long before he gets back in? Is he What's his what's his injury prognosis? Is he long-term, mid-term, short? So he'll play. Uh, we've got our game at um, Country, Lib uh, Country Living Homes Reserve, we call it now, Tony. Next okay. uh, Thursday, Anzac Day Clash yep. versus Glenunga. So in answer to your question, uh, he'll play Thursday. Fantastic. Yeah. So him and... Uh, is it Trent Heffernan? Trent Heff will play next week as well, yeah. so we'll get a couple of guns back. Wow. Yeah. So you're going to get stronger and stronger. You know, a game like this, uh, you know, if you happen to get up, fantastic. But, you know, you win these tight ones, and then you get stronger yeah, and stronger. And I saw you, the game last week. So this chipping around, maintaining possession, I'm not sure on these because they become 50-50s. Mind you, it is Lysette there. But last week, this ball would have come inside, you know, uh, oh, and there it is, a turnover to Olsen. Kick. Left footer, which is the right thing to do, have a left footer on the boundary side. But that is that, kick is that Zach hit. McKay on the far side that just intercepted that ball, Tony? With if the, it was number um, three, it could head. have been. He's been really good today. Yep, and out it comes here. First game for this. Elliot uh, Brompton, yep. Is it junior? Just relaxed. Oh, it hung in the air while Haynes, the athlete, comes in, does the uh, figure four leg lock. <laughs> on uh, Noah Hyde. He's uh, having a very good quarter, Noah Hyde, too. Look at that left foot kick. Once again, though, up to the 50-50s. Oh, it's touched the ground here. Oh, being held oh, on no, to his no. Greek. Now he absorbs it. Doesn't get the free. But uh, I often talk about that. You transgress, you give away free. You've got to give a five-minute burst and try and do something for the team back. And he was there. Lysette pushed out of it. Third man went up. Tyler Martin. Anyone's ball. Oh, picked up off the ground. And uh, Elliot Brogdon, not happy about that. And that is two goals six for the quarter versus three goals five. Inaccurate kicking. But does bring it right back in. And uh, what a game and a half because uh, three points are different. Six goals, eight, 44. Six goals, 11, 47 on our uh, Sportal and Hahn scoreboard here. And Hahn, of course, ultra low carb. Great taste, ultra low carb. How good. Very good. That's a rhetorical question, but of course, there we have it, Craig. Enjoying one, one as we of speak. My favourite. Uh, Fantastic. Oh, good, that is a strong mark. Sam McKay. Samuel McKay had, uh, he was the sandwich then, wasn't he? That's a yeah. really, you can hear that ball hit his chest then as he took that. So he elects to go short. Liam Ferns. You've got to, uh, now, if you're going to play this type of game, you've got to be really good with your skills. And that's exactly what we're talking about. If it doesn't, there's the turnover. Olsen kicks it back 40 to 50 metres. Oh, Latham manhandled. They need a handball out. Can't get it out. But that's very clever by Monty Stash. He's bought the ground. Uh oh. He did kick, but he's given it straight back. Yeah, and uh, running in is Cody Tate. And that's a nice goal. And that's that pressure with Tea Tree Gully. And we heard the uh oh because that kick has to be a switch across the ground, not into that dangerous hot spot. Player just in front of us, uh, not Liam, going too well. Liam and Ferns. He's not good at all there. And I there think she, I don't I know whether it's ankle or medium. Quarter, Tony, because, uh, here he is here, just that kick and he's come off. Um, this of course we're seven seconds behind or 10 seconds so we can sort of see what happened there. And that kick from Olsen came in, that was a long kick. And then just that pressure bit there. He did so well, Motty Stash, to get it up. Just that slip and that's, then that oh, pressure that? work. That's fantastic. Uh, so they're forward here, uh, Port District. Yeah, so we've, we've uh, won the centre clearance with Lysett down to uh, Gray, gone into the forward line, and it's just getting bottled up over on the far side in the, in the pocket. So can they answer here? That just really a purple patch in this quarter. Uh, in the middle of the quarter there, we're... 27 and a half, almost 28 minutes in. Gee, McKay, looks like he's got a... No, that wasn't McKay. That was Noah Hyde with a bit of cramp already in the third quarter. So, might be on the pickle juice. <laughs> you heard about that, gentlemen? Yeah, Something new? Yeah. yeah, not nowadays, Swill it Tony. And spit no. it out, don't drink it. Yeah. Gee, nowadays it was a Mars bar and Salt a bit tablet. of Coca-Cola before the game and hopefully you get through. 
Yeah, salt tablets came into play. Yep. Rubbed down and, uh, so well. It's shaping up for a big last quarter, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah I agree, Brownie. And, uh, you know, we you know, we were reasonably confident that we could run out the game and get over the top of them. So we'll see uh, you with the fitness, Sean Baker there. I see him playing, running around the reserves too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the scoring in is to the right and Tea Tree Gully are kicking that way in the last quarter. So I reckon we're in for a cracker. Dude, Lysette's given his all. He's lifted this quarter, I reckon. And uh, see big Blake Penny, we talked about him. Not as influential this quarter and just taking his time to get up off the ground. And they're really, he's going back that kick with Lysette now and it'll come into their direction as, uh, well, Haynes, welcome to local level grassroots football. Has to find his way over the fence and between the signs. And <laughs> there he goes, stepping over again. So, you'll expect the long kick, which it is, late in the quarter. Oh, both players. Yeah, I think what happened there, Big Lysette just ran in and kept going, and Riley Verrill was in the way and got mowed over. So lucky to get back up there, Verrill. Points down the ground, then goes just short. Can they load up again here, the gullies? Well, that's a high kick there by Mitch Napper. It's over the back. They need a handball, but it's to the back of the player, so not to his advantage. And, uh, well, Braden Rackwall had to have that panic kick because the handball was to the back. Um, just interesting coming out to a ground like this. It's great grassroots footy, isn't it? But you see the crowd. It's like a country game, isn't it, with the cars on the hill and everything? Yeah, yeah. it is. It is. Absolutely. And you look back towards the uh, club rooms, there's a fantastic crowd back there as well. And Tea Tree Gully supporters in full voice, Tony. Yeah, and of course, Port Districts. Uh, so give us the naming of your ground again. I like that. We'll give you another mention. Yeah, well, we, um, we've worked very hard in the off-season. You know, our two main revenue streams, amateur footy are uh, sponsorship and, and obviously the bar. So yep. we identified uh, that was one of the areas that we can improve. So we went out to Country Living Homes and we said, look, you know, have we got a deal for you? So... Um, Mark Ravenscroft and, and Julia Ravenscroft come to the party, so we've secured a five-year deal with Country Living Homes, um, which will well and truly secure our footy club um, going into the future, particularly with our new club rooms being built uh, next year. So the crowd goes crazy here, wanting holding the ball. The umpire bringing, so it's a long, long quarter, 31 minutes oh, here. Another injury. So you don't need that, and he's going to come straight off too, and that's... Uh, Oh, of all players, Niskahos. That, that, that looks like it's, doesn't look good. I won't tell you what we can see from here, but his left leg doesn't look good there. As physical in the middle here. Up and down, and a little bit of sportsmanship there. Just feeling that leg. You keep an eye on that, Craig, as we're yeah, winding yeah. around the 32 Trying minutes to work here. Out whether it's a corky or whether it's more damage than that, Tony. So high reach up there, the old love that screwy. In it comes. They can't. Can they get through here, Tea Tree Gully? They can't quite. Oh, Nash Haynes. So, yeah, ah. strong there, wouldn't he? Had to stand up in that tackle. Beautiful work there. One on one, having to get after that's Broden Hawkins. And well, you'd be happy with the ball up there. Yeah, we'll take that, Tony. We just um... could be a corky. Yeah, stoppage and a, and a, a nice clearance and a snag roll will be good for us right about now. All right. Well, we'll see if you got the crystal ball. Goes out, comes back. He's just gone down here. Yeah, I think it is a corky. You might be right, Craig, because he's really rubbing that leg there. But geez, uh, hard because it's once it starts hurting, it just gets worse yeah. and worse as the right day wears on. Could be, yeah. All right, far side now, the gullies. Oh, Olsen with a high, high kick. Up it goes, down it comes. Round it goes. Gee, the gullies, can they squeeze one out here? It's oh, out in front of a player. Oh, right on the siren too. So that score will not count. Not that it's a score. So the score at the moment, two, three gullies, seven goals, nine, 51 to... Six goals, 11.47. So four points to now to Tea Tree Gully. And just overhearing that, uh, Niskahus there just saying he's not going to ice it. So we might keep an eye on him and just see whether he can get back on in that uh, 
last quarter. So it's been a pleasure. Uh, first of all, Darren, thank you so much yeah, as no a present. Worries, and yeah, thanks for now we know and, Country uh, Living Home's over. We'll, uh, we'll keep an yeah, eye on that. So thank you, first of all. So get around there. Reserve. Yep. And, uh, and Craig, thank you very much as well for your input during this third quarter. We'll let you go off and uh, bite a few nails in the last quarter. <laughs> Before we go, Tony, can we just get a, a plug for Tea Tree Gully Football Club? We had a, a serious, serious injury with uh, one of our lads. In uh, early grade. in the C grade today, and uh, they just took over. We, we took over their uh, trainers' rooms. Um, all their players, you know, um, got strapped up outside. It was a fairly ugly incident. But, wow. uh Tea Tree Gully come to the party, so we uh, we thank their executive and uh, their players and their training staff. It was ugly in the fact that it was just the injury. There was nothing, nothing yep. untoward for yep. it or anything like that. But, yeah, just a really. Uh, nice and we love injury. hearing that because. Uh, you know, the slogan, strengthening communities through football. And just to hear you two guys, it doesn't matter the division, but to hear that kind of thing happening is not, not good for the player because we wish the no. player all the best. But for the clubs to help each other out, that is yeah. just sensational. We've and always had a really strong relationship with Tea Tree Gully, yeah. and especially in the last four or five years. We've, you know, worked on, on you know, both being community clubs and trying it's to... It's bigger than football, isn't it? Yeah. Really? And, yeah, yeah yep. we're at... An amateur, it's not the amateur league anymore, of course, but we're at this level, uh, and to hear that, what, a, what an outstanding thing for, for both clubs. So, yeah. uh, once again, gentlemen, we can't thank you enough. Stay tuned, folks. The big game down there at uh, Country Living Homes Reserve, is that correct? That's on, on uh, Thursday. Thursday, Anzac Day. Anzac you, Day you've got crush. a bit going on with the ceremonies and so on, yeah, or just we straight have. into the footy? Yeah, yeah. We've, yeah. Got, we've had some Anzac Day uh, medals made up for our wow. side for the day. So, yep. um yeah, we take it pretty seriously, as most people do, and, and um, like to pay our respects to the to the diggers and um, uh, really, really just, you know... We've got some ex-servicemen going to be there yeah. today, and we're going to honour them as well, Tony, so but that's what it's all about. It's about them. All right, gentlemen, we will take a break. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Thanks Tony. Tony. Cheers.
back to the last quarter. Here we are, Tea Tree Gully versus Port District. And, uh, well, she's on in the middle. Tap out here. Who will win this game? Four points on the scoreboard as we speak. Tea Tree Gully, or oh, player down in the middle. They're probably going to have to stop the game here. He doesn't look good. There's players going down like uh, bowling pins at the moment. Ball on the half-back line. He's got back up, so that's, uh, that's a good sign. Marked by Alex Danoff. Very, uh, very passionate three-quarter time speech by Josh Ramsey. You know, as, yeah, as we mentioned, it's uh, Jason Niskehouse's uh, 150th, and boys just need to lift. James Patty. How did Tea Tree Gully go last week, Tony? They no, they got done, but uh, it was because uh, they had they lost their uh, interchange as well. So that's a good question, Craig, because I've put that sheet away. <laughs> We're in the same boat this week. No, no real interchange. So around the corner, and Tea Tree Gully are going to release here through Jordan Person. I'll say, uh, in answer to your question, they lost by 22. Uh, they were up 34 to 32 at three-quarter time, and they just had no interchange, and they were dominating first, first half. They were uh, 19 points in front. Right in Sacred Heart. So uh, there we go. That's what injuries can do to you as that ball comes out towards Penny there. Not, yeah, there's Penny there waiting. No, that was, uh, sorry, Tyler West. Around it comes to oh, another, another great contested mark that was. Ben Gould. Haven't called him a lot today, but gee, he does some good things. Gaffney, we haven't called him as much as last week, but look at that left foot kick, bang, into a contest though. Beats everyone. There's three Tea Tree Gully players here. There's a shepherd on. Almost dribbles over. One, two. They work it out. This is a young fellow. Oh, very well done. And gives a handball cool. inside. That was a glimpse of Jack Hazelhurst and what he can do. Player out in front. That's uh, Liam Potts. Big long kick in. Latham, watch for him on the ground. This will be something clever. Goes to knees. Gets it up. Tries to give it out. And very well done by Monty Stats there. He... Uh, just a good battling uh, backline player, really. Oh, like yeah. Not battling, as desperate as he won't give up on yeah, the ball. Yeah, his second efforts are outstanding. He's good in the air, but he's also just as good on the ground for a, for a tall yeah, tall lad. Yeah, if you're a full forward and you're, you're walking to him, you'd, you'd probably think, oh, I'm in for a good day today, but uh, it's quite the opposite. He's just so diligent and competitive at what he does. He just give, doesn't give you an inch. Do a big smother there. Well done in the forward line. So... Port District having a bit of trouble getting that out. Uh, Blake Penny on his own back here, so that means you you must have an extra ruckman uh, or license spare down. in. Licence down in the uh, back line, taking the ruck. Yeah, and I see, I reckon it's Haynes that might be the spare, but there's a spare somewhere because Penny's just standing here with hands on hips waiting for that ball to come out. It's wobbling around here, it comes, but clever play because it's a ground ball. Goes past Dwyer, unused territory in the back line. Now it's past everyone, so the midfield's not there. So you had to wait for it and go oh. to the boundary and uh, did drop it personally oh. off and a smother there Didn't as well. Didn't get advantage so out of that. A little bit going on and looking a bit sore is uh, Samuel McKay. So we'll see how the fitness goes. Just for those people wondering at home, yes, our score is incorrect. For some reason we have a technical glitch with the points. So it is 51 to 47. We'll keep you updated as the scores roll over at this Point, it's out of our hands, so we will keep you on the live scoreboard as well. Not only that, I've got the old-fashioned pen and paper going, and even <laughs> well that's done, correct. Tony. So seven nine fifty one plays six eleven forty seven. Race three, the winner was uh, horse number five, <laughs> and up it goes. <laughs> oh, it. there just the numbers just stacked up there. I thought they were races uh, like the old days, <laughs> A versus B, and so on. So Dwyer is getting ball. off the ground. A lot of players around the ball. Yes. Well, why sit there? Oh, that's... you can hear the uh, you can hear the crowd to the left of us there. Yeah, it's just there's a lot of anticipation. The waiting for the game to sort of break open one way or the other. Well, it was uh, three goals six the gullies that last quarter to three goals four, so it was only two points in it. Why well, sit getting on top? I believe in this second half. Over a penny, but he's just a bit slow to get up, touch a cramp. Comes back now. So this beats all the midfield a lot. This goes back to the old one-on-one -on -one days. Yeah, yep. And what can again. happen here? 
desperation and support by Modestas. Again, he's growing as the game's going on. Oh, they've popped it out. This is dangerous. Good tackle. James White. Yep. Great tackle by uh, Gaffney, Gaffney and there. And um, I noticed he, he, was, he had a tag on him at the start of the game, which is... Um, You'll take that as a play if you're a halfback flanker and you get a tag. Yeah, you'd expect it's that. It's a bit of a medal, I suppose. So, but he's starting to unleash a bit now, and hopefully that's a good sign for Port Districts. Here we go. Oh, we're, we're out, out the back. This has the 150th. The cork looks all right. He's had it strapped up. Yeah, look. Free Mark, down the field. Free kick down the field or great play. you got the trifecta. Oh, there's a bit going on on the far side, and player bought the ground there, and the umpire's roaring in. Have a look at that. She's on... Good old fashioned Donny Brook and uh, player just dragged the ground. It was almost the put him on your feet and flip him over the back. There's a bit of WrestleMania. Oh, that was uh, <laughs> that was from the free down field. It was Oof. a bit, bit carried on. Kept after going that. on, didn't it? So yeah. James Batty lining up for goal has been a little bit off. Correct. He, he's he's in the side to kick goals, Tony, and he needs to Ooh, hello. slot this through. Are you on the selection panel as well, Darren? At all? No, he's missed. There it. he goes Aaron? again. Uh, I actually took that off a supporter that it mentioned it uh, through the second quarter. Yeah, I, look, you are correct, but I'd have him in my team every day of the week. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you know, you, you can have an off day and, and then fight back. Do you know what, though? When he's got that ball in his hand, there's 35 players that haven't, so he's done something correct. He's Absolutely. run to the right spot, or in that case, it was downfield. He, he did mark it. Yep. So this is a little bit of a mirror image of you guys last week. That long kick out, the gullies have been renowned for it. But kicking it up, picking it back in was uh, Dinehoff. Oh, hey! downfield. Everyone Sam saw Ray. it, but uh, round it goes. Dwyer again, liked him. Up and down it goes. Big fist comes in to the, both back lines. Very, very similar game today, isn't yeah. it? The, the yeah. big fist, the punch, the rolling balls. Look at Blake Penny. He's in the middle of the ground. He's going to, well, I wouldn't call that a sprint. He's going to work hard to get to this ball. And Lysette let him go. So yeah. dropped off, and then McKay comes in. So you start to see these dynamics. So Penny will be tired when he gets to it. Well, I'll take that bat. Have a look at that. Guess what? He's going to kick it back in the direction of Lysette. Probably another half a kick behind here. Let's see uh, little blokes do the work. If the gullies get this out, this yeah, will go back. There he is, Lysette. Just gone over out. the top there. Monty Stash again, as we said. Pretty good game he's playing Here's today. One-on-one. -on -one. Good battle. Yeah, Alex Dienoff, uh, good one-on-one -on -one there. He's got some support back by Doug Gregg and uh, Liam Ferns, but they're going to look like they're going to have a shot here, Tony. If they've um, toiled pretty hard to keep possession of that, and they've uh, just missed it. Gee, I can tell you what, the crowd went up up as one then and then down as one. And that's just been the, the tale of today, Tony, isn't it? Like, uh, you know, 3v2, 3 to Port Districts, v2 to, to their team, and and somehow they win the contest. How does that happen? Mm. I think it all comes down to intensity. So there's the that mirror image line. Yeah. of the kick-ins. Great isn't it? mark yeah. from Broden Hawkins. Ben Gould's got it running down the, the boundary line. See that kick there, just, Tony? Oh. Needs to be to advantage. It just over, needs to be to advantage. And probably been the story of our day. Our field kicking has just been a little bit subpar. And it's probably an area we need to improve on uh, if we're going to challenge uh, Glenunga next weekend, next Thursday actually. So it becomes a bit of a circle work. Holding the ball. And then a pressure act. Yep. And you get it back. But all that work, as you said, Darren, gets down here, one kick, misses. Yeah. All that way back. A lot of hard work to get it back again. And this kick here, 50-50, due to a pretty good player in this It's out the back now to the gullies. They work off him. He did have a player inside here, but goes outside. Long way from goals, Jack Asprey. Just doing well at maintaining possession so here, Petrie Gully. Yeah, they're out the wide Latham. side, over to us. This, this lad's played really well, Olsen. Zach McKay. And Olsen, yep. See, the call comes from Olsen to oh, give sorry, it. Oh, sorry, Olsen, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so, a bit slow there, but Braden Wackwell got it on. Oh, and that's a goal. Look at the celebration here from Noah Hyde. Yeah. You can see that they constructed that, as you said, Craig, they came from the other side of the ground. Port District did all that work to get it down. Teacher Gully get it back across. It comes undone on that wing. The gullies come inside, out here, and through Olsen, you can, we could hear him calling then, yeah. give it, give it yeah. to 
It was just bad Black decision wall. making when they had possession of the footy. They just um, really lifted their eyes and used it well. Yeah, and and the, we go back to that kick exactly, uh, from Gould. Yes. That if, that's, if that gets kicked to advantage uh, to Samuel McKay, uh, he's a thumping kick. He's having a shot on goal. And exactly as you said, uh, I'm just watching the replay here on, on our monitor, but those kicks all hit, whereas yeah. that one kick, even though it was on the half-back line, it can be so damaging, can't it? Yeah, absolutely. That kick that misses. Absolutely. So there might be a little bit of work with the uh, Dartfish Vision and the filming footy stats this week by the coaches and yeah. just pointing out the positives and negatives. They go up and down near the gullies. Can they get a run on here? Gee, Big Penny, he's kicked that 80 metres, 40 up, 40 down. Gee, player held on to there. We could see that front on, yeah. but the umpire being back to it, so we give him the benefit there. Oh, big pack forms. Haynes, quick hands. He's almost too quick for... Just positioned himself really well to, yeah. to rove that contest. He's almost too quick for a lot of the other players out there. Monty Slash again, we're uh, really starting to call him during this game. Him and Haynes. But it's that kick there that's got to really hit a so target. Look at, at T3 Gully, the how they set yep. up for that um, fall of the ball. We had so, no one forward of that contest. So wing, wing and half back, Darren, as you mentioned, is yeah. where it's just falling apart a little bit. Yeah. And, and the turnovers are critical, and this is what happens. Gullies get a shot on goal. And, and as you mentioned, that might be the scoring end. And uh, we mentioned Craig, didn't we, in, in the first quarter. They just, uh, their work rate to get to that front and centre, T3 Gully, has just been outstanding. And that was a classic example in that last one to get a forward entry uh, and a shot on goal. So eight goals, 10, 59, six goals, 12, six sixes of 46, 40, uh, six sixes of 36, Tony. 48 it is, <laughs> plays 59, 11 points. Comes oh, around, that's a mark. good grab there. Mitch Gaffney, yeah. with one hand. Two well, he's battling the Premiership player. Oh. It's a little bit, little bit rusty at the moment. He's back just in this week, yeah. Yeah, he's been injured for, he's probably been out for about eight weeks. Uh, played a game in the B grade last week, so in fairness to Mitch, he's probably a little bit rusty. Good grab there to uh, Matthew. As I did have a chat to a mate in the country, playing their first game up, up in the country today, one of the teams, and we talked about that, you know, players... Do, you know, if they don't come to time, they don't play sort of stuff or, or injured players. But sometimes the weight of what they've done in the past, you know the quality of the player. And just a little glimpse like that, a winning moment, if you like, mm. for Mitchell Gaffney, is enough to say, yep, that justifies yeah. why we've picked you, mate. And uh, away you go, a little bit of confidence for himself. So, Penny, it is. It's been a great battle all day, I reckon. As I said, Lysette, the uh, third quarter, and maybe a little bit of this quarter, a good battle, and then Penny gets it back. Now, Lysette, we see in the forward line, that's a pretty handy handball around, just offline this goes. But I'll tell you what is good yeah. to see him get back on the ground. It is, it is. We just need to compose ourselves a bit better in that forward 50. Just um, throwing it on the boot. I know Jason was under a little bit of pressure there, but we just got to um, look for that more controlled kick, I think. And it's moments in games too, isn't it? It so, is, yep. Uh, Jason plays his 150th today, he snags that through, and all of a sudden, uh, poor Momentum. districts are up and about. But, yeah. and, and it lifts, doesn't it? You know? yeah. Look at that kick in. Once again, up it goes. That's great defence work there. So they turn around again here, Port District Cooper player Gaff on his own. Harry Dwyer. And James Batty takes the mark in the far and pocket. That's what he can do. He just, he's exciting, you know. And we, once again, we talk yeah. about moments. You win enough moments in a game, you win a quarter. You win enough quarters, you win a game. And Batty here is uh, just lining up. Jeez, he does give it off. Now, here's a bloke that's got a reasonable kick. Yeah, yeah just going to say in five Please years... Please don't put the boz on him, guys. <laughs> five years, I don't reckon I've seen Batty give it off. But, uh, well, he's brought another string into his bow this uh, this game. Yeah, well of, done, uh, young man. I'll say that with tongue-in-cheek. Haynes. There won't be a problem with the distance from Joey Haynes here. Jeez, he just drogs off. The umpire has and not moved. Too, that's gone yeah. straight through the middle. He's his second for the day. So that's He's, interesting. Uh, Seven goals. I did say you had 11 goal scorers last week. You've had uh, two, three, four, five. You've had six different goal scorers this week. And Joey Haynes is the only bloke that's kicked two, and he's on the half back flank. Mm. Worked that out. Yeah. yeah. But what a, what a great Philip that is. You can go back at the end of the year, coming into finals. Touch wood, you get there. You know, but 
and you say, well, we know our backmen can kick goals. This is a building block game, if you like. Yeah, under just on that, Tony, it looks like Joey Haynes has gone to the forward line or they're playing a centre-half forward role by the looks of it. It's a very good wrap-up, though, just if he was off half-back. But he, oh, maybe yeah. that's just <laughs> happened now. <laughs> maybe that's just well, happened now. That's just, yeah. that, ha- that change has just happened, but I think. moving well, the magnets with let's, Josh uh, Ramsey. Yeah, well, yeah. Let's, let's give the credits to Josh. He's uh, it's a bit of a master stroke. Well, you ha- you've had to do it under, you know, players are... You haven't got the interchange that you have. Yep. Another clearance out of the middle, so getting on top. That's a long kick in too. Oh, is that a grab? Looks it's like. not. Who's that off the ground? That's a, that's goal. a sausage roll. That's Broden Hawkins has kicked that one. So, well done, bros. So, a bit of a change in the centre at that uh, ball up. Looks like Liam Ferns has gone into the ruck. Boys are up and about here at the moment. So, just, uh, well, we'll say, Dad, but you're actually the present just watching uh, how this goal was constructed out of the middle. That yeah. was quite quick there. Yeah, we can see um, the players set up. Pretty average game uh, today, bro. So uh, it's good for him to uh, get up and do that one. So a bit of a stoppage there. And uh, we're about to uh, have have the centre bounce again. So we'll uh, Yeah, it just came out quickly out. out of the middle, wasn't it? And yep. Big pack congested. Gets just off the, the right spot bag. and yeah. uh, just straight on the boot and straight through for a very important one. So if we say the gullies certainly need one now, now's their time to act and they can't get past that centre four position. And look at the desperation. Gee, once again, uh, Dwyer, he's given us glimpses today of what he can do up around that midfield area, not just being a, a half forward. Yeah, well, so here's the other change with uh, Ferns going into the rut. Looks like Harry Dwyer has gone onto the ball. It's um, impressive. Harry Hawkins just handballs out to Harry Dwyer and back to Harry Hawkins on the far side. Couple of Harrys. Contested footy. Out the back, Port Here District. Goes, Niska. Niska has a shot on goal. There's no He's one like home. It. He's like and it. And he likes it. Have yeah. a look at him. Have a look at that. There they go. So Have a look as, at that. as Darren Hawkins just mentioned, some, some really good changes by Josh Ramsey just to not let things get stagnant and mix it up. I like that because you can have a you can be a coach that recruits in and, and you know by checkbook and that which we can't do much of in the Adelaide Footy League. So you've got to be smart with your recruiting, um, and you forget the checkbook. You look at what we what we need, and then when you've got your squad, it's no good just saying oh we've got, we've got all these top names. You've you've got to be able to coach when you're under duress. Yeah. That's a sign of a good coach when and you're the other, under pressure. The other master stroke for me, uh, Tony, is um, you know Blake Penny has had an absolute uh, ripping game and uh, almost taken the points against uh, Scotty Lysett and Sam McKay. All of a sudden we see Liam Ferns into the ruck, who's a jumper. He jumps, likes to jump in the contest. And, it's, almost, uh, it's almost like we're setting up to lose the ruck at the moment because Ferns is a good ground ball player, so his second efforts after the ruck are exceptional. Well, um, he's very athletic. Good and it was Manny. Penny around the, around the ground, wasn't it? So that's where, look at him run off now. 16 there, Ferns. He's, he's like a, another midfielder there, which we've seen. Oh, There's that's a, a big collision. Doug Greg there in the back of the pack. Geez, wheeled around. He's done a full full circle there, the big fella. That's Tyler West. So it's a high ball. Uh, Had to stand under it. taken that right on the boundary line against how, the point post. How good is he going? If, if you you know, young blokes like this can come in. He is a young bloke, I hope. Yeah, he can he's come in and, and play a game like this, you yeah. know, that releases off uh, some of the other guys yeah, and yeah, justifies. He's playing, yeah, so Penny. Penny and uh, Joey Haynes are battling out for best on ground here. Yeah. 17 and a half minutes here. Ball comes in, and it's like kick to kick. Oh, I'll tell you what, he's missed kick that. Oh. Giving it to Noah Hyde. He's dropped it. Oh, well done, Ben. Dropped the Gorgie. World Cup. Make a contest out of that. That is sensational. He's taken high. Umpire trying to shield his eyes there. Very, so he couldn't see him. Wow, we. Once Seven again, and a half minutes in. by Port Districts is below par. They've got it, something that they might have to work on during the week. Eight points the difference as we speak. Comes around. Lost it in the ruck. Yeah. Well, they want another ball up here and probably a clearance. Probably need a spare out because Penny's there. Like, do you load up and try and cover the back line or do you get a spare out and, and make them accountable in front of the ball? So playing in front position. Gee, swamp there, the player. This is desperate football. Taking the ground straight away, Cooper Gaffney. Now Paul want to play holding the ball. Yeah, he, he loves will, that. because oh, the Tiki Gully that. player was appealing <laughs> right next there to him. There was no time to get rid of that. That was a tough one. Did go to knees quickly. Cody Tape going to have the shot now. 
Tutri Gully wheeling the interchanges. So, uh, tape now, pretty acute angle. Let's just have a look what he does. Ball in hand. Right footed, he's swinging it around a lot. And that's what can happen. That's uh, where he's gone, Tony, exactly yeah. where he ran. And out on the full, so you get another chance here. But as I said, Penny's the spare up on this kick in. And they've done this a lot today where they've kicked it up in the air, kicked it to him, and he's a very good grab. So we're 19 and a half minutes into the quarter. Yeah, yeah and you can see, you watch uh, Josh Ramsey be very strategic in this last seven minutes, and we can pretty much see the whole oval. I spoke whole... earlier, sorry to cut in there, yeah. about go to the boundary and you'll get the boundary, and you almost want the boundary here, but that's just dropped short. That's fallen way short of where Boy. that was expected to go. That's uh, Adam Machado. He's a left footer with a good kick on him, but doesn't quite get hold of it. Anyone's ball, the big pack comes. On the ground now, it's out. Oh, swamped uh, there, James Mitch White. Gaffney. So, yeah, Mitch Gaffney coming to the fore. Every player in this half of the ground, uh, Big Blake Penny's just really pushing hard to get across to be the spare here. But I tell you what, if Port District do get it out, it's going to be a scramble up forward because there's no one there. It's all in one half of the ground. Player here, that's Benjamin Gould, just getting a bit of work on his fingers. And I'll tell you what, mighty job second half with one interchange. Mm. And it's still been an up and down game. As we said, eight points the difference at the moment. It's going to be tough round and round. Uh, to get the ball out of here. There's, there's 20 foot. Round the corner, touched. And just a point to the gullies there. Joey, Kane, uh, Joey Haynes, our, our normal kick out, is um, trying to receive the ball. He's the receiver here, yeah. It's interesting, it's come right in that area. Big pack forms, oh, having to stand under it there. Pressure all day, we spoke about it. Mitch Napper. Really good call by been the that kind of game, he did, hadn't it? He did duck his head. So he's the free now, Napper out the back of this. Penny gets off the ground. They go forward, the gullies, oh, you wouldn't believe it. Gee, touch late. Umpires called it as well. Braden Rock, Rackwall there was just running back to get down into the forward line and it was a banana kick. It sort of bent back towards the pocket, takes the mark, gets cleaned up. I think it was in the play, but it was a touch late. So he will have a shot on goal here this in a very a tight point, game. Tony. This is a, this is turning into a real game. One point the difference if he kicks this goal. And he has. And he has. So Braden Rackwall with his first. And it is a battle of two great coaches here, Mashotta and Ramsey. We talk about combat, which is what we as uh, people are seeing, but there's tactics between the coaches uh, and also your game plans and structures. Yeah, so really it. interesting wound for a belter of the last few minutes here. Scoreboard ticking over. One point in it. As we said, we apologise for our uh, on-screen scoreboard. Numbers aren't quite right there. 66 plays, 67. Lice set in the middle. He's uh, He has bounced back. Penny's given a fair bit this game. They go up. They battle. Hit it straight in the middle. Umpire comes in. Interesting uh, centre bounce. Mitch Gaffney's gone in and is uh, matching up on number two, I believe, Chris Olsen, so, who's been quite damaging. So... Oh, Ramsey thinks that ball, uh, yeah. he's worth tagging. Gee, that's courage, isn't it? That's a grab. That is a grab to uh, Cody Tate. Can he be the match winner? Gee, he goes to the pocket. The lead comes. Oh, the big barrel chest comes out. Wow, we. They've done well, Teacher Gully here. Tyler West having a shot on goal. Yeah, Nash Haynes uh, had to take that ball cleanly going, um, going forward through the, through the wing there. They've He's kicked, kicked it. it. He's kicked it with Tyler West. So they will surge ahead here. 72 plays 67. Game on. Hearts in our mouths. Of course, joined by uh, Darren Hawkins, president of Port District, and Craig Brown, the Vice President of Port District, as we speak, and uh, 
giving us a great insight, not only just to Port District, but on the game itself. It's great to get different people's views and visions of the game. And, uh, well, just wait for that scoreboard to tick over. Yeah, as Brownie said, all credit goes to uh, Tea Tree Gully. Their intensity has just been unbelievable. Their centre clearance stats. Here you go, Port District again. Can they get a kick out here? Jeez, he had the wriggle there, Niska Huss, and he's done it. He's put it in that dangerous position. Watch out for Batty. And there, there he is. is. And he's sucked he's out for 25. Man. No, he hasn't. I tell you what, just as I was calling, watch out for Batty. And there he is. This is what this player can do. Outstanding. We're going goal for goal here. 72 67. Five points of difference. 22 scoring shots apiece. Batty. Three or four minutes. 20 to go. metres out. Darren Hawkins. As the president, you get the call up, mate. He hasn't had the kicking boot on all day. Is it the winning very boot ordinary, moment? But put your glasses down, Tony. This has oh. gone straight through the middle. Not a doubt. He's oh, happy. He's happy. We're He's very at happy. the team lifter. I'll, I'll tell, tell you what. what you, you, I know you speak highly of him, Tony, but um, for his size, one-on-one, -on -one, he's almost unbeatable. His body work in a situation like that when the ball's coming in erratic, um, just his ability to be able to hold his... his uh, his opponent off and, and get his get his body to the ball is, is yeah. unbelievable. He, he plays as a tall or like that, a bullocky, bit of a Jason Dunstall type there with that yep. mark, and yet put the ball on the ground. He's one of the most exciting players in Division 1, and I don't say yeah. that lightly. He can get around and be elusive, and I remember, I keep going back to it, a couple of years ago, he was your main man in the forward line when you had injuries oh, and players yeah, out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And he just jump on my back and follow me, boys, and that's what he can do. Yeah. And look at Lysette in the middle. Can they get it out? One, two. A little bit of pressure comes now. It's right on these players. We're 25 and a half He's minutes get in. Holding the ball, yeah. And T3 Gully are going to load up. There's one point in this game. Here's our umpire again. Loves making those calls. Just for the people watching at home, it is 10 12 72 versus 10 13 73. Ball in the forward line for the Gullies. It's up. It's down. Could we have a draw? Haynes. Just that'll do. A hack Very out. Smart. It gets oh. back to Noah Hyde. He's kicked the two. Noah Hyde now. He's on the 50. It is one point the difference. Around he comes. Doesn't quite get onto it. It's in a dangerous position. Up, down. Oh, player swung the ground. It's going to get out here by Port District. Or is it? It is. Greg again. And gives it back to Tea Tree Gully. I'll tell you what, the crowd is on their feet here. Anyone's game kicks it in. Oh, big Blake Penny. Can the captain kick the winning goal? One point the difference. Oh. He's kicking from the 50 metre arc. I'd probably say the distance shouldn't be a problem. And he's pulled it to the left and it's gone through for a minor. No, it's oh, no. full. All he needed was a point there. Wow. All right, Brand, so he, just... he, he kicks out goals and he's uh, best on ground, hands on that late. Yeah. So, uh, oh, he's not far off it anyway. In yeah. my book, he's been exceptional. Well, here they are, him and Haynes. The guy with the ball in his hand. Yep. Is, uh, Great game. He, he racked up possessions in that first and second quarter when it was tight and it's still tight now. Yeah. One point the difference for those people watching uh, the broadcast, our technical difficulties with the scoreboard, but just disregard that. It is 72-73 Port District leading as we speak and we are and 27 and a half again, minutes. And making that call. He's just trying to even up the scores here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All you right, can't so say that, Darren. <laughs> ball comes inside 50 again. Oh, high leap. It's over the back. That is a huge grab. That looks like is it Tyler Martin? Let's just have a look. It Mate. is. That was a pack mark. That was one of the best you'll see. So Tyler Martin. If he kicks this, Tony, I don't know how much time's left. There wouldn't be long, but um, it's going to make it difficult. Oh, he's missed it, so scores are level. So scores are level. Wow. Gee whiz, wow. that's a let off. Three goals, three versus uh, four goals, two for the quarter, so six scoring shots each. 
And uh, boy, oh boy, there's not much time left. 28 Jones. and a half minutes. Have to go down the middle, get it off the packer. You get it forward. Guess who? Batty. Batty does get it forward. Where are the runners? There there's no anybody. one down here. It's up to Pasaniti if they're going to win the game. Just to shuffle out. Look at the players converge. They come from everywhere. Dives on it. We've seen this before. Umpire yeah, says, holding the ball. He's consistent, Darren. He's consistent. Oh, I'll tell you what. That is 25 as well. Oh. That could be the game. Well, he's called every other one of those holding the ball, so he had to be consistent boy, with it. Boy, boy. What a contest. Passaniti was running in all on his own. Tree Gully have erupted down here when they've kicked the goal. And now, Ferns is Liam Ferns who's played in the ruck. What a game he's had. He's played in the ruck. He's almost an extra on baller. Any score, there's the siren about to go. I can hear the beeper. There it is. Ferns is going to kick on the siren. Anything will do. He has Wow, what kicked. a game. What a fantastic game. A goal! Ferns it is. Oh, my God. Kicks the winning goal. Wow. I tell you what, gentlemen, how is the heart rate? Four goals three to four goals two in that final quarter. They win the game. Yeah, that would be fantastic game, Tony. 11 and, uh, goals, 13, 79 in the end to 10 you goals, what, 13. Gully are unlucky to drop that. They had the opportunity to, uh, to get ahead there. And, um, yeah, I, I, my heart's beating 100 miles an hour. That was, uh, that was intense last couple of minutes. Yeah, I'm well, speechless, Brownie, that... Uh, T3 Gully were definitely the better team on the day. They, they were outstanding with their intensity and their pressure. Our guys come a little bit complacent, I think, as well, Tony. And uh, All credit to our boys. They just found a way to win, yeah. especially for uh, you know, our, our good mate and uh, uh, absolute ripping bloke, Jason Niskerhaus. 150. What a, yeah. what a day for him. Yep. But, uh, you know, you talk about that. The ball went up and back, up and back, and then we saw the shootout goal for goal. Look, that's one of the best games. Well, it's the best game we've seen this year because second round, but that's that's been the best game I've seen in a long, long time. Not only commentating, just to sit here as a as a uh, supporter of football at this level. What a great game! And they uh, they kicked that that goal, tea tree gully, and they, the crowd yeah. here to our left erupts. But as we know in football, we don't know how long there is to go. But uh, well, I reckon that last ten minutes, uh, oh, the ball boy. was forward to centre in tea tree gully's forward line for probably the. Last six or seven minutes of that last ten minutes. So uh, they were very unlucky not to run away with that one. We'll just see if we can get the uh, coach over for a minute. Get him on air just at the end here. But uh, he's just going now. I think he's going to go over and celebrate with the players. That's fine. Uh, president, very excited here, and vice president. But uh, boy, oh boy. Got, um, we've got our uh, backline coach coming over, uh, Robert Thompson. Uh, what are your thoughts there, uh, Tank? Uh, yeah, really, really tough game. I thought uh, both teams had a real crack. Teacher Gully were definitely on top for most of the day, and um, our guys uh, with no bench really battled it out. And uh, when it came to the crunch, um, yeah, we, uh, we got over the line, which is uh, really exciting for our mob. Joey Haynes off the back line there, probably our best on ground, we'd suggest. A sensational game, and uh, uh, Blake Penny taking the marks in ruck. But, uh, of course... That last quarter, Scott Lysett bounced back as well. And uh, I t- so just tell seeing us a uh, bit. Jason Niskus get chaired off yeah, the ground. Yeah, just for watch this for the moment. Awesome effort. Copped a corky in that uh, in that last quarter and managed to get up and get back on the ground and had a had a few key key roles in play to uh, send us forward, which is really good. Thanks, Tank, for your just sorry. Comments. Just a quick one, uh, Liam Modistash. Yeah. We thought uh, played an outstanding uh, game today. He, Tell us about him down in the back line. Just he, he's a, a um, he's a Port Junior. He's come to the Port Districts Junior. That's come through the the ranks. Um, really, really ripper kid. He's had some uh, some big jobs over the last couple of weeks, and uh, has stood out. He's um, yeah, he's a ripper. If we, if we can certainly uh, get him to do a um, a job on there. Their main forwards, it, it frees up the Joey Haynes and those sort of guys as well. So he's been outstanding. All right, just quickly, thank you very much for that. We've got uh, Liam Davidson, uh, captain, who's Sean, Davidson. Sean, Sean, sorry, Sean Davidson, captain, uh, expected back runner today, mate. How's the heart rate going? Um, pretty high at the moment. Ran a few Ks more than expected. A few messages late there, so yep. always under the pump. What were the Ks for today, mate? Oh, bang on 12, so. Not a bad effort, probably more than a run on game day. So You reckon you'll get a game in this team coming back in on Anzac Day? Of course you will, mate, as the captain. But, oh, I uh, mean, fingers crossed, hopefully train well this week and put your yeah. name up. Nah, thanks so much, mate. Get in there and sing the song and Too join easy, in. And, uh, I'll thank Darren and uh, 
Also, Craig, for joining us. They want to get down and uh, sing be, the be song and see what's going on. And boys. Fantastic, gentlemen. Thanks for having Thank us on, Thank you so Tony. much for joining us. And yeah. Well, we look forward to Thursday. Yeah, Big absolutely. Big clash down there. You go and enjoy, and I'll wrap us Thank up. Thank you. We'll Thanks, go get Tony. the beers for the boys. Thanks, Tony. So we can hear the song in the background, and uh, just great to have an insight from both Tea Tree Gully and uh, Port Districts today on air. Well, as we said, the final score, 11-13-79, Tea Tree Gully, Port District 10, uh, sorry, apologise there, that's the wrong way around. 11-13-79 it was to Port District. And Tea Tree Gully were 10 goals, 13-73. So, fantastic win there to Port District. The last kick of the day is what did it. And, uh, well, they get home, they get the chocolates, they celebrate, and they've got to prepare for Thursday. Goal scorers for Tea Tree Gully were Cody Tape, 1. Noah Hyde, 2. Tyler Martin, 1. Braden Ratchwall, 2. One Tyler West with two, Mitch Napper with one, Jack Asprey with two in his hundredth. Uh, better players were Blake Penny, Chris Olsen, Zach McKay at times, Cody Tape at times, Mashotta did very well, Adam Type, uh, and also battling well was Liam Potts, Jack Asprey at times. Get across to Port Districts, Jason Niskahus in his 150th, fantastic effort. Uh, Sam Gray, very good. James Batty, second half, sensational. Joseph Haynes, our best on ground for today. Great game off the back line. Uh, of course, cannot go without mentioning Cooper Gaffney. Very good game. And the two Ruckman for both teams, so Blake Penny and Scott Lysett. Blake Penny, probably most of the day, the better Ruckman. But uh, having said that, Scott Lysett in the second half really uh, gutsed it out and, and uh, had a very good second half. So we would like to thank our... Broadcast partners, Filming Footy and Sports Interactive. Our huge thanks to all our match day clubs and officials. A huge thanks once again to all of our sponsors. Remember, Filming Footy, Sports Interactive, Scoreboard brought to you by Sportal and Hahn. Filming Footy, Footy Stats, Dartfish, Best on Ground, Wins the Archie's Thongs, Make Sure Ratify, Farmers Leap, Winery, Roll the Dice Racing, Born to Build, Wakefield Sports Clinic, I'll take a breath and Bianco for our mark of the week. Remember to watch everything on Filming Footy social media pages and between the posts. Thank you very much to Payas, our director for the day, cameraman, doing a bit of everything, and his lovely partner Dee assisting as well. My name is Tony Neal. On an exciting day for grassroots football, no matter which way you look at it, signing off and we will speak to you soon on the next broadcast. Thank you very much.